In Liberia, November 1944, a public spirited person was born. Joseph Numa Wakai from Wasanga, Foya District, Lofa County. He is a role model. He's actually my inspiration. He's also a perfect example of humility. He's a very humble person. Through that papi. The help he start giving all from this one here. I know that when he get there, he will help me. He will help the nation. In Liberia, November 1944, a public spirited person was born. Joseph Numa Wakai from Wasanga, Foya District, Lofa County. He is a role model. He's actually my inspiration. He's also a perfect example of humility. He's a very humble person. Through that papi, the help he start giving all from this one here. I know that when he get there, he will help me. He will help the nation. In Liberia, November 1944, a public spirited person was born. Joseph Numa Wakai from Wasanga, Foya District, Lofa County. He is a role model. He's actually my inspiration. He's also a perfect example of humility. He's a very humble person. Through that papi, the help he start giving all from this one here. I know that when he get there, he will help me. He will help the nation. In Liberia, November 1944, a public spirited person was born. Joseph Numa. Wakai from Wasanga, Foya District, Lofa County. He is a role model. He's actually my inspiration. He's also a perfect example of humility. He's a very humble person. Through that papi, the help he start giving all from this one here. I know that when he get there, he will help me. He will help the nation. In Liberia, November 1944, a public spirited person was born. Joseph Numa Wakai from Wasanga, Foya District, Lofa County. He is a role model. He's actually my inspiration. He's also a perfect example of humility. He's a very humble person. Through that papi, the help he start giving all from this one here. I know that when he get there, he will help me. He will help the nation. Ah, 
everybody and uh, welcome to class. Uh, today is a fresh edition, uh, Monday, um, September 12th, um, AD 2022. We'd like to welcome all of you. We have a full house today of panelists. Uh, we will be joined uh, midway through the program by Senator Delon and uh, Mo Ali, hopefully. Um, let me say welcome to our distinguished panelists. We have joining us um, also today uh, for um, I think the third time, second or third time, George Lobo. Um, welcome, George. And let me say welcome to uh, Ente Miata, Daniel Sando, Lara Manyonton, and the great uh, Geraldine Matthew Pia. Um, and let me also say welcome to all of our, uh, our listeners, PR Radio, and those of you um, following us on social media. And we'd like to say welcome to all of our folks in the comment section. We do appreciate you joining us today. Um, and we will be glad to have a very fruitful discussion. On tonight's edition, we will be looking at uh, a number of trending issues, as always. Um, our panelists will talk about current events and trending issues across the length and breadth of Liberia. We will speak to um, some of the latest news as they unfold, and then we'll move the conversation to what we term as National Resignation Day. National Resignation Day. Uh, in 24 hours, uh, the government will see three key officials of the government have tendered in their resignation. Um, the three sanctioned officials we will be looking at their resignation and uh, what it means for the government. And then we will move the conversation to the uh, the news report that uh, the National Elections Commission have, has issued a contract to a group called ICAM, a Chinese company to do the biometric um um, voter registration. Um, and then the U.S. Embassy, based on a report issued by the uh, by the, the uh, Liberian Daily Observer newspaper, had issued a statement. We'll read that statement. It, it provides a clarification, but it also speaks clearly to the elections and how the U.S. is interested in the uh, transparency and accountability aspect of 2017. So uh, let me say welcome and also for those of you listening via radio, we are on Bushra Radio FM 98.1 there in Montserrado, Shaka FM 102.5 in Montserrado, Radio Dupa FM 89.1 all the way there in Grand Basel, um, Voice of Lofa FM 99.3 in Vongeman, Radio Joy Africa FM 95, 97.5 there in um, Magibi, Voice of Gompa 106.5 there in uh, Gompa City, Limba County. And Butor Radio FM 
2.3 all the way there in Sino, Greenville, Sino County. Welcome to the flow, to the show, uh, everybody. And let's start the conversation with what's trending. And uh, we will begin the the ball with uh, Endemiata. Endemiata, um, what's trending from your end? Quite a little bit. However, um, one of my most important trending, I was going to direct it, Senator Darius Dillon. Oh, lovely. Ah. So school, yeah, was, school, 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 school girl, just from school. I am so most impressed because uh, most of our African fathers uh, do not repeat what you just did, embracing your daughter and kissing her. I can tell you, my father never did it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that one, I don't want to Yeah, so I'm so touched. Okay, well, my first real concern, I wanted the uh, senator to be on the program, so I don't know if you will allow me to wait until he comes. Yeah, That's I think you can talk about your second one when he comes, then we can pick it yes. back. And well, I, um, I, I'm sure the senator is listening more. It's twenty issue you want twenty issue so, five. Yeah, yeah. 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 even if he doesn't there, come so no, on, the, 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 the senator is also carrying the show live on his page, so he's listening. Okay. Yeah. Yes, because definitely, uh, the trending issue for me, I, I I come with sincerity, but I come with some ignorance as well. And for me personally, I wanted to tell the senator that I thought he owed me uh an apology he owes all of us an apology because the last program we did together i listened attentively to him to the explanation of the pension bill i had not followed other media to know what was being said it was only on the program when the caller started to come that i like what's going on and Pierre, you were there, Steve, you were there when he explained in detail that it was a judiciary report that still blah, 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 blah. Next day, I go on social media and uh, my relative, Molly Passaway, I mean, has Senator Dillon on blast vis-a-vis -vis his deceptiveness, his this, and they had all signed the bill. I don't normally go on posts where I don't know the originator or whatnot. So I felt comfortable to go on Molly's post to say, didn't you listen to the class reloaded? The Senator explained that this was just a judiciary recommendation and they were sending it. Oh, and he came back again. It was not, and it was this, this was the finished bill, etc., And then, someone else that I didn't know came after him and said, don't mind them, blind loyalists. And for me, that was an insult. That was an insult to my own integrity because I'm nobody's blind loyalist. I'm not on this platform uh, to promote Senator Dillon. I'm impressed with the fact that he seems to want to learn and people have faith in him. So it's, it's our responsibility to consistently remind him and if he should, you know, fall, etc., he's not only bringing that uh, a question of integrity to himself, but to all of us. And, and, and I didn't want to write him a personal letter. I didn't want to put it in inbox because I think the class reloaded is about each and every one of us. If we do want to change in our society, then we should be honest with each other and, 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 and tackle the issue and not to be afraid. So that was really my issue. Uh, the Senator has to, trust his people that's all i can say and, and be honest and be frank 
but for me it was it, it was not a pleasant thing it was not a pleasant thing okay and then my second issue uh, which i don't want anybody to criticize has obviously been the death of queen elizabeth <laughs> and since thursday my tele my television has been on uh the bbc following everything uh george you gotta forgive me i went to england i had the honor and privilege to go to england when I was nine years old. That's when I was introduced to the monarchy. And yes, my friends and children have told me, but how can you like the monarchy? And they did all <laughs> of this to Africa and this, 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 this. Listen, the rogues in Africa have stolen just as much from us. Our big men, them on this continent, they now steal from us. <laughs> So, if we're going to call anybody to action, let us start with us. Let us start with us. But I would advise the younger generation to just take patience, forget about all the um, pros and cons. Watch it for what it represents, an institution an institution, a tradition from, I told my daughter tonight, from 1066. We don't even have institutions from the 1900s. And it will go on and on because they are committed to duty. They are committed to their tradition. You cannot rub that institution away. And we can learn something from that in Africa. We can learn something in Liberia. We can learn something in Liberia. No institution is standing even after 175 years. No institution, no structure, no grave preserved, nothing, nothing. So please be patient and watch my queen. <laughs> Thank you, Adebiyaz. So let's go to, let go to Pia. Pia, what's the name? Uh, I will want you to delay me, small. Go to the other <laughs> come out. My, my daughter is doing okay. something okay. on the yeah. back of I don't want you to interfere with your stuff. Yeah, just delay me, small. <clears throat> also, Steve, for me, what's trending is about things that involve Liberia. Uh, we've, we've dedicated enough time to this country and we must continue to fight for this country uh i'm being struck by the mpp the tyler party and the cdc uh there are reports that the guys have reaffirmed their ticket uh that they will be carrying president george we are and his current vice president joel howard so i think it is about time let me use this medium as well uh, to speak directly to my political leader and my party officials. Uh, I think it's better. We already know who, we know the other team, we know the lineup. I think it's important that we also, we begin to formulate our own team because now we can say, okay, we know who will be playing left back, we'll be playing right back. And so we can be able to engage. Uh, we can't hold too long. Uh, let me say this very clear. One thing I've come to realize, Tivo, especially dealing with my people from Liberia, is that uh, many leaders in Liberia and many people always believe that decisions they, they make should always be popular. And you have to understand that good decisions are not always popular. Uh, development itself comes with pain. There will be no sin that will be running. Uh, there will be no vice president pick with tired butts. There will always be reasons here and there. But that should not stop us and that should not hold us back. I think it's important that we bring forth our ticket. And at least hopefully from now to the end of October, let us have our side and let the people know. But then in addition to this one, again, I just wanted to add this. Uh, I think when we do have the time, I think something that is trending is the, the economic report on our government. 
and I asked the presidential aide to give me three economic activities that support their economic growth numbers. Since yesterday, I'm still waiting for him to reply. Uh, so I think when, when, when he replies, we'll talk about it. This is the only economy in the world that is growing and overperforming, but consumer spending is down. They can't pay employees. Uh, they, I, I mean, I mean, it's sorry for, but I'll leave it there. That is, those are the things that are trending, prices skyrocketing. Thank you, Josh. Um, Larima. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for me, I think what's trending is um, an amazing letter written by um, Representative Frank Fogel. And to me, even though Ente Miata spoke on the Dillon aspect, but it's just to say how politically on the other side, um, our friends on the other side are using every opportunity yeah, looking, looking for campaign too. Yeah, to 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 beat on the lapses, you know, of the opposition, most especially Delon, who uh, since he's going to the, the 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 Senate, has set some level of standard in terms of transparency and integrity. Um, I think it was it was laughable for a Frank Safoko you know, to to uh, capitalize on the on the mistake and the lapses of, of, of what happened with the whole saga of the pension fund um, to score some political points. Um, I think it was laughable. But also I wanted to speak on the issue of um, the, 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 minister, the minister of, the former minister of commerce, uh, Minister Wilson Tappet, and the saga he's currently engulfed in. in. Um, it was reported on the I think analyst newspaper involving the three million that was associated. But the small with, business, no. Yeah, um, that was associated with him, and and how that resulted into his transfer from the Ministry of Commerce to to where he is now, the EPA. The EPA. Um, it is not too main strange for for people who have worked closely with um, Minister Tapet uh, at, at the University of Liberia can attest that. He has always been involved in in this, you know, small, small money yo-yo in the Liberian country. Financial irregularities. Yeah, and 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 that was not really surprising to me. Thank you, uh, Daniel. Thank you, Steven. For my end, there are a couple of things that are trending, but I uh, I would just like to to throw light on the the. The, the pension, the integrated pension bill that is currently before the Liberian Senate, which has caused a lot of controversy. I uh, and I think this coincides with Intermediate own training issue, but I, I, I just want to say that one problem the Liberian legislature has got is its inability to, to set up a robust communication channel that will frequently transmit information to the public when matters of controversy around surrounding the Senate or the legislature arises in the public. Why do I say this? This whole thing, I think there are a lot of misconception. There are a lot of, I mean, uh, misinformation that have been intentionally, dis I mean, disseminated to the public with the sole intent of drawing the law into another controversy because my, you know, we've all realized that the folks from the CDC have got no campaign too. All they want to do is to tear down the loan because the loan is the one who said hello. It's a we threat. can challenge the system. We can make a difference. And I think the only crime the loan has committed in this country is to say that I want to represent the truth and the light I will expose the wrongdoing. So yes, what many persons don't know about the integrated pension bill. And I think those who follow the proceeding at the legislature on last Thursday. There, there were comments, remarks made by people from the government who support the government. And those comments were very were very clear enough to vindicate Senator Dillon. For example, Senator Snow made remarks and said that what was passed on by the Senate and sent and transmitted to the lower house is now what is circulating the public. Somebody is intentionally misinforming the public with the intent of scoring political point against Delon. If anybody is doing so, 
It's a bad campaign strategy. They got to change it. These were the exact words of, I mean, Senator Snow. So I work at the legislature. I know that what the vote, what Senator Dillon signed on was a two-page committee report that was to be attached to the bill, which was yeah, being... I, 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 sorry. Yes, which has been which have been argued, and I'm told that the leadership of the legislature has set the the, ben, the pension benefit for retired or uh, former lawmaker at ten percent. The argument was between ten and twenty percent, and they have not even resolved on that yet. And somebody went and put, to, I mean, to the public a very wrong information on top of 50, 50, 50 percent, and it caused this whole public outcry, thereby making the Senate to appear like they are so insensitive to the plight of the people. But again. It goes back to my initial point. If the Senate had prioritized setting up a very robust communication channel, it wouldn't have caused them anything to, to just place a call to some of the, the media outlets that were discussing the thing. For example, Costa discussing on a show. They could have placed a call to say, Mr. Costa, what you are discussing is wrong. The Senate did not pass on any such instrument. They could have done similar thing on Spoon FM. Unfortunately, I mean, the folks at the legislature do not prioritize public relations. So in the end, they have been bastardized for the wrong reason. Because I work there, I know that what is in the public is not true. It's not true. What they don't sign on to is a two-page committee report. Okay? The committee report is not a law. And what they even transmitted and voted upon and transmitted to the lower house is not what is circulating in the public. And, you know, I think for me, this... I mean, among other issues, like Larry Ma said, the 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 to the lower house, and they are trying to blame and the Dillons and the Lauren and say, Oh, opposition people. You see the trend of the argument. There are dominant CDC support at the Senate. They do not call Sir Joseph name they do not call mm -hmm. Abbott, mm -hmm. right? Because these people represent the spoil system. The only reason why they come up to bastardize Dillon, Nyombi, Borchas, and other people who are sued for the right reason is because they do not want anybody to distinguish themselves from the spoil system which they represent. And I thought it was important that I stress that point. Yes, very important. I think you, you're right because um, um, the 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 up the, the CDC is always <coughs> looking for a campaign for something to boost their campaign ahead of 2023, and and because they've performed dismally in terms of governance and the economy, so any little news that will give them the kind of national relevance, they will try to 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 feast on it. So thank you, Daniel. Let's go to Pierre. Pierre, what's trending? Yeah, Stephen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what is what is what? First, for me, what is trending is um, you know I have a very serious political ear. Okay. I worked for six years at the center of power, corridor of the executive mansion, and so we know how to have our ears stuck to the ground in those kinds of places. And we have a kind of crisis situation in the um, in the current government. There's a huge battle uh, <clears throat> that we're following. Right now, Finance Minister Twe has fallen out of favor both with seditions and President Weir. And the reasons, or the reason is simple. Seditions believe that Mr. Tue provided terrible information about McGill that eventually saw him on the list of uh, those who were sanctioned. Does it make sense to me? Not really, because I'm not sure the Americans will sanction somebody because Tue says sanction the person. Mm -hmm. But that's the whole battle they are fighting. And starting with seditions, Mr. We are believed that. And therefore, he has a serious problem with Twitter as we speak. The now on turn, I don't know how many of you watched the funeral that was recently attended by President Weah. I'll, I'll put a picture. There's a picture from that funeral. 
You want me to get it? Then we, then we talk about it. No, no. <laughs> Hold on, let me put it up. Hey, so, yo. This, so this is the picture. Mm. Look at look at your foreign minister and see the disconnect between he and the president. Look at, Samuel, look at Samuel Tua sitting on the third bench. <laughs> the president is sitting on the first bench. There's a second bench. Tua is all the way at the back there in some dark Google. <laughs> and like he's on the moon. There's a very serious and strange relationship between he and the president. And you know, pictures speak a thousand words, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that issue, that issue is there. And Tua himself is now on shaky ground. Very shaky ground. Um, this is also coupled with the fact that he himself, beyond here, we are saying he has been seriously worried because why he's been accused of being one of the masterminds beyond mm -hmm. providing information for Maggie to be sanctioned. I'm, I'm, I'm not too sure that he himself is very far from being sanctioned as well. So it's a crisis we're having on here, here now. And because, and, uh, we're going to be talking about it because that's one of the talking points, but because McGill has resigned, there's another fight as to who, who will be the next Minister of State. And my ears on the ground also telling me that it's a battle of three persons. Serious battle. And it shocked me a bit if I look at some of the people. For example, Madre Kimanya is supposed to be on that list. And I'm wondering, how is Mr. We are even thinking that Madre Kimanya can be Minister of State and Chief of Staff to the President? This guy came here at the UN, Stevie. He destroyed the image of our country. Okay. Our people in, in the Senate did not pay attention to that because you should have never been confirmed as a foreign minister in the first place. Because you embarrassed us here. You came here as a diplomatic style. You start getting involved in sexual issues. And you, since you left this place as a foreign minister, he never stepped his feet here. That should tell you something. But there's a guy who was a contender, in fact, a serious contender for replacing Miguel. And then you have my winning, the lady who was sitting right by president. We are in the picture you just showed. She's the other contender. Minister. My yes. friend, yeah, the lady there is, is, a, is, a, is a daughter contender. And then my friend, Len Yuji Nambe, is the third contender. So three of those persons, as we follow this development, one of them will be Minister of State for Presidential yes. Affairs. And chief of staff to the president. I'm still in a kind of bewilderment as to how Masri Kimanyan name can surface on such a list. But that president, we are, I mean, officials will serve at his will and pleasure. Those are the people he, yeah. Yeah. yeah, those are the people he believes in. So that's it. And then the second one, quickly, I will just rush with it. We need to pay attention to the Ministry of Lands, Mines, and Energy. <laughs> that play has become a cartel. And the, the commander in chief for that cartel is the president pro tem. Uh -huh. He got two Emmanuels in that place, two Emmanuels who are reportedly involved in a lot of scandals, scandals, selling money licenses, grabbing money for year and them, supervised by the by the by the pro tem, allegedly. And it's a big crisis in that place. In fact. After the president banned of late all foreign scholarship, we told that one of the Emmanuels was listed for a foreign scholarship, and 85,000 US dollars was paid for that scholarship. But guess what? That Emmanuel, I think he's a deputy minister because the two Emmanuel, one is an assistant minister, one's a deputy minister, but they're in the same department. And they involved with all those scandals. That 85,000 dollars was paid for the scholarship program. Guess what, Stephen? and fellow panelists, the beneficiary did not go to school. They, they reportedly share that money among themselves. They, 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 the other Emmanuel was an assistant minister, the Emmanuel was a deputy minister, and reportedly, the protein, they shared the 85000 dollars which were disbursed for scholarship purposes, and the guy did not go to school. It was just a scan used to get the money out of the system and eat it. But that place is a hell hole. Hmm. Attention need to be directed at the Ministry of Lands, Mines, and Energy. I'm not even sure the president has authority over that ministry. That ministry is a pepper butch for the president pro term of the Senate. Those are my training issues.
Thank you. And and and, and, and we're we're also hearing that um, um um the president is thinking about moving and as you readily said, um D Maxwell came into Ministry of State and and and, and move um Jenny Copa from um, from agriculture to to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Those are the the, the um the latest news we're hearing. Um, we we'll pay attention to that uh, as they unfold, and and, and as you rightly said, there are, there are three persons in contention for the Ministry of State position. Um, um, as it stands, D Max has a strong connection with Claudia, um, and so uh, many persons believe he's in pole position. Um, to for, as for Eugene, um, many persons believe he said that he will be an extension of uh, of McGill. Uh, and so it wouldn't even make any difference because there are speculations also that he could he too could be uh he, he's a possible candidate for the um for the for one of the batches of sanctions coming so how that plays out we will be paying attention to um events at the at the executive mansion in the, in the coming weeks so let let let's move now to our um our um first segment where we're going to look at the um national resignation day today um, the president received three. Still one quick question: Did yeah. I hear you say the president is contemplating on moving the minister of agriculture to the foreign affair? <laughs> yes. The the one who was indicted by LACC for corruption. Yes. yes. Oh, did that okay. Yeah. Okay. But the, the <laughs> fact that the fact that she's still in a job of uh, Frank, I mean a George Lobo, it, it means that yeah. it's not a change the, the president confidence. Yeah, the president got time for your corruption business. That's why it changed your way, LCC, by the way. Yeah. So um today is National Resignation Day in Liberia. Um we witnessed the resignation of three sanctioned and disgraced um government officials who were last month. Uh, August 15th, sanctioned by the U.S. government under the Minsky Act for Public Corruption. Uh, 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 and today, they tender in their resignations, um, McGill, Bill Twawe, and um, Serena Cephas. But let, let, let's play this um, this uh, Al Jazeera tip so that we can give our our viewers some some insight about about the the the, the sanction and 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 and, and, and what, what it is. So let me let me play this. Two senior members of Liberia's government are breaking their silence. They had kept quiet after the U.S. Treasury imposed sanctions on them in August, accusing them of corruption. Nathaniel McGill, the president's chief of staff, denies the misappropriation of public funds and of instructing warlords to threaten political rivals. He says the U.S. has got it wrong, that it's a case of mistaken identity. But somebody may have misled him. Somebody may have told them a story that's not correct. And there are people out there who are using my name. That is a fact. It's a, tr it's a fact. And it's been reported people have been arrested. But somebody may say McGill is doing it, but I'm not, the, I'm not the guy who's doing it. The country's solicitor general, who used to run a publication called The Plain Truth, says the U.S. accusation are all lies. He blames his former boss, the Minister of Justice, for any wrongdoing. The Minister of Justice should be accused of all those things. He receives document, he reviews contract, he signs contract. Never in my life since I became Solicitor General. Even Petit Cash is the Minister of Justice. The men have been suspended by President George Weah. The former football star was elected in 2017 on a campaign promising to fight for the rights of poor people. His goal was to eradicate corruption and poverty. Retired civil servant Paul Flomo has hoped that Weah's presidency would bring change. He's appalled that government officials are now accused of stealing millions of dollars from the state coffers from which he gets his small pension. Not only is his $60 a month pension rarely paid on time, it is a meager sum compared to the $5,000 a month salary members of parliament receive. Most Liberians live on less than $2 a day. With rising costs, what was once affordable is now a luxury. Mr. Flomo can no longer afford to buy fish or meat. Sending his daughters and grandchildren to school is now beyond his means. It's a project of government to see about the welfare of its citizens. If the welfare of the citizens are not being sought, then we'll bring the government. Wea says the economic fallout from the Ukraine war and COVID are the cause of his country's financial woes. 
His political opponents say mismanagement of public funds is the real reason. Following the imposition of American sanctions, an investigation is underway. The U.S. is Liberia's main international donor. And while both men are close friends with the president, in times of economic hardship, the United States is one partner Weah's government cannot afford to ignore or lose. Nicholas Hawk, Al Jazeera, Monrovia. All right, guys. Um, so you 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 listen to the uh, to the Al Jazeera tip, and it, it provides for us uh, um, what is happening in the country. So we know now that uh, these three guys were were were, were sent from by the U.S. government. They, they were. You still playing? You still playing it? Or somebody playing something? Yeah, it's it's coming from somebody full. Oh my! Oh, good now. So the 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 West sanction, um, President, we have suspended them, and said he was investigating. As it stands, we've gone almost a month. There has been no report of any investigation whatsoever. Um, now they have they have all resigned, and and I'm asking this general question to all of you, and, and each of you will take a stab at it one one at a time. And I will begin with George on this. Um. You 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 see what is happening, and you think that we are lax decision making and the and and, and and the ability to to take action. You know that that instead of you moving to 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 dismiss these guys, you 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 suspended them, and you do back to channels where you now force them to resign. You know, say, gentlemen, you just you just resign. You know, after almost a month, you just resign so that I will can because now, as I learned, we are coming to the US this week, I think, for the um the, the UN General Assembly supposed to start um this month. We actually be in the States. So in order for me to come to America and, and attend the UNGA and you're still <coughs> around hanging out, enjoying government benefits, uh, 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 um, I don't think this is um this is Right for me, I'm going to the U.S. So, because I'm going to the U.S., you guys should, should all just get out of there, you know. So, what is your take on this, George? Uh, Steve, thank you very much. My take is very, very clear. Uh, President George, we are, like I said, one of the greatest struggles of my life is waking up every day knowing that the country that I come from, that fought 14 years of civil war, that in the 21st century, its president is George We are. I struggle with and the reason is very simple. You know, former U.S. President Barack Obama said you have all the advisors in your ear. But at 2 in the morning, after reading most of his briefs and listening to all his advisors, he has to make the final call. President, we have demonstrated over and over that he lacks the ability to do just that. He's shown that through all his dealings. Uh, I think... The, the resignation that we just got today, like you said, uh, President Weah did not act until our international partners spoke out on the sanction, if you recall, before he then suspended. So again, it tells you about President Weah's ability to make decisions. And a smart leader, real president who understands what needs to be done. The very first thing after, that, after the suspension were announced, there would have been independent committee set up to conduct some type of investigation or work with the United States government if President Weah was serious about fighting corruption. But one thing about the CDC, they've, they've had this model for a very long period of time. The way the CDC closed cases is by saying we are conducting an investigation. That means we have concluded this discussion. So for President Weah, he believed that that was going to slap. The unfortunate part about it is that he was on his way to the U He wants to come to America. For him, coming to the UNGA, it's, it's the optics that he likes. Uh, the pictures he will be taking at the UN for his seditions to be happy, even though while they are starving, hungry, lavishing in abject poverty, he believes that that is doing well for him as a president. The fact that he will be seen at the UNGA with other war leaders, he thinks that that portrays good leadership. Even though he comes here with two to 300,000 taxpayers' money for a struggling country like Liberia, and it's taken back absolutely nothing. In every, anywhere in the world, Steve when government make investment, when we spend money on presidential travel, the, the intent is that there will be return on that investment. 
Uh, this is the only president who travels and come back with nothing and promises to tell us what he's going to be doing. But on the issue of the resignation, Steve, I'll tell you this. I know Maguire very well. Maguire will not go cold. Uh, I strongly believe that there must have been some serious negotiations in the back uh, to say, my man, I'm going to the U.S. You guys know it would look very bad because if President Ria really wanted to ask Steve, that would have been a long time ago. But again, exactly. The Liberian people must understand, like I said the other day, and I will always say it, President George Weah was elected on the ticket of the Coalition for Democratic Change. The Liberian people come 2023 now will have an obligation. They will have a decision to make. President George Weah, based on his dealing and whining with all these corrupt officials and how he has strengthened and improved corruption in the country, he will now be leading the Coalition for Development of Corruption in Liberia. That is the ticket he will be leading. And the Liberian people have a choice to make come 2023 because he has shown no willingness, no desire, no appetite, no, no political will to fight in corruption. Instead, he has emboldened and strengthened by destroying all the anti graft institutions that we established to promote accountability and enhance transparency. He has undermined every single one of them since he has crippled them. And as a result of that, that's why the country is struggling. And so for us, you know, I would just say this to the Liberian people, you have a choice. It's not booing, it's not yelling, it's not commenting. It's about understanding the obligation you have to the 23. And it's showing that this group of big gang of thieves never ever see the Capitol building or the executive mansion again. And we'll make that happen come 2023. You can call him the former president as of now. Thank you. Thank you, John. And tell me other. What's what's your take on this on this um stuff? Repeat the question. So I'm saying um you you seen the resignation, you you oh okay seen, yeah and and, and, okay. and is it belated or is we are only acting because he's he's coming down to the US. So uh, Stephen before Ed Mela I think Mo been in the background for a while if you can Yeah Mo 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 is Mo was uh, eating an apple so they yeah, so I, told, I told him that that was not right, but I think he don't move it down. No, he, he's an army. He can put his cell in when he's ready. <laughs> but he's saying, waiting for you. What are you saying? He eating his apple. He begging. He said, please, army, so he could do it. You're not be begging like you're not iron. I think he no. used his phone or something. So. Or more, more you add me, so you have to come on by yourself. <laughs> so, oh, Steve, you finish, no, you finish no, in no, the SG. No, 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 the resignations should have been within 24 hours, regardless of what President Weir said. And I say from where I come um, to normal days, to the days of integrity or the days of sheen, they should have resigned. And uh, so for me, it really is nothing to make a comment about. I've said it over and over, we're running a government of friends, um, people who have power, um, who have been given power. And uh, so this is the result of it. This is the result. These are not men of honor. These are not men of integrity. These are not our fathers. Who the moment they caught them in something like that would immediately resign. But these didn't, so it is what it is. Thank you. Thank you. And then Miata. Uh, Ali, uh, welcome to the show. Um, it's good to see you. Your mic is on. Is that oh. eating your apple, my man? You muted. You muted, Ali. You just come in, you sticking. <laughs> you Am muted, I, darling. Uh, Ali is in a struggle. It, it, it looks so. Yeah, he's muted. I don't know what's going on here. But let come to yeah. let come to you, Daniel Sano. What do you make of um, what do you make of this? Well, Stephen, my my initial thought. Of the when the sanctions were announced on the three officials of the Liberian government was that I I knew from a 
from the perspective of international politics that essentially would have had very uh, negative implications on the government of Liberia as a whole. And given the kind of person that Mr. Weir is, and when I say so, I think you know what I mean, that he wouldn't normally care about this kind of international, international, uh, the country being listed, backlisted internationally. He wouldn't care about that. And so that was exhibited in Mr. Weir's initial response to, to, to the sanction. I come to think about it, these officials of government were never indicted by the government of Liberia. They were indicted in sanctions or designated in order of war by the U.S. government. For the president's initial response to have been that you will suspend these people and subject them to an investigation, it left the public in a state of bewilderment. As so what investigation was Mr. We are talking about? Today, it turns out to be another political charade that the government actually intended to sweep the sanctions and implications on the country on the carpet. Mm. But of course, we were very far-sighted. We have not rested. We've been on radio stations saying that the Liberian presidency have been sanctioned in effect because these sanctions didn't just come from, it didn't take a, a bottom-to-top approach. It came from the top, the office of the president, the president chief of office staff, right? Was the one being mm -hmm. sanctioned. So I believe, I believe from the perspective of international politics that the Liberian presidency was being indirectly sanctioned by the U.S. government. But it just like giving the nicety of diplomacy, <clears throat> it could not sanction Mr. Weir. But in effect, they targeted the presidency. <coughs> there is nothing that the president chief of staff would do that the president doesn't know about. Okay, look at I mean, look at look, look at the, the, the chief prosecutor of the government, Serena Sifos, talking about Serena Sifos being sanctioned for colluding with money launderers. Now, the U.S. government invest a whole lot of money to combat terrorism, counter terrorism, and money laundering around the world. Because these, these two crimes are interrelated. There are people who have dirty money from the Middle East and everywhere. They want to clean their money. So you find that most of the people who would be involved, who are supporting terrorism, will be involved in the money laundering. So that's not a small crime that a government will say, we'll see him over and say, we'll suspend him and investigate him. So the government initial response to the sanction were very, very like a dasica, okay? And that came as a result of so we are being the kind of person he is because they, they do not care to know the great deal of political capital it costs this country when we're considered a pariah state on the international scene. They don't care. They don't know why it costs the city administration to repair the image of this country on the international scene. They don't know. So the thing, it was just an overnight, you know, magic that caused Liberia to be a, an investment bonanza where they talk about 16 billion investment, foreign direct investment, all the kind of thing. But it cost the government of President Sadi a great deal of political capital, right? To go out there to repair the image of the country that was ruined by the 14 years of brutal civil conflict. So, Mr. Weir doesn't understand that these sanctions will have very negative implications on his government and on the country as a whole. So, therefore, his initial response was very poor. Now, and I agree with Larry Man that because a trip to the U.S. is in a couple of days. He wants to do something to appease the United States government and say he conscreened the, the, the officials of government whom he initially refused to, to dismiss, to resign. But then all of these things will not undo the implication of the sanction on the country. What I think the government should do is to begin to distance the country, the government as a whole, from the actions of Miguel, provided that Mr. Weir did not, I mean, acquiesced did not sanction, did not authorize some of the things that the official government are being, are being sanctioned for. He needs to distance his government from this thing because, I mean, I tell you what, the implications will be very, very catastrophic for the country. And we are not prepared to go back to where we came from. The country cannot suffer because of Mr. Weir. Of course, we are approaching election in the next 14 months, and Liberians himself has not understand the kind of what we have in charge. A president who does not care for the international reputation of the country. A president who will want to defend criminals at the detriment of the country. A president who believes in cronyism. A president who believes that corruption is a guiding principle of the government. And even though his government is being blacklisted internationally for acts of corruption, but he does not take any critical action to restore public confidence. 
in the government, which I think is very much unfortunate for our country. And I hope Liberians are following this thing. And this is why we on this platform do not need to rest. We need to continually re-echo the inability of Mr. Weah, not just to rescue this country, but to also fail to do the right thing to promote the image of this country on the international scene. That's my thought. Thank you. Thank you. And let, let us welcome uh, Senator Dillon to the um, to the show. Um, Senator, welcome. So um, let, 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 let's come to you. Senator, you hear answer also. You hearing all? You hearing all, Senator? His mic is... You can hear us? His mic is muted. His can you hear us, Senator? No, he's still muted. I don't think he's hearing us. Let him, no, let he's him, muted. Let he's muted. So, uh, Pia, let, 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 me, let me push the, the, the question a little further. And, 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 and I read through um, Cephas's letter, right? And, and, and he, talks, he talks about a number of things. First thing is... He still hasn't realized that he's been sanctioned because of his own behavior that are contrary to, to that of a solicitor general. He still thinks that he's been sanctioned because Musa Din complained him to the Americans. And because of that, that's why he's sanctioned. And, and if you go a step further in his letter, he 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 pretty much is 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 is, is trying to to explain to the president his successes as a solicitor general, he, the office established the pirates and they were able to, to collect uh, eight, eight million pounds from somebody. In fact, that money is supposed to come. He, he urging the government to make follow up on the money to see when it would come and you know that kind of thing. And then, if the president wants to appoint a new solicitor general, the president should look at somebody who has an experience in the courtroom and all those things. It, 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 it's a, it's a long, windy, and, and useless letter. Resignation letter is not where you go explain what you're supposed to do and what you did and something. Resignation mm -hmm. lecture should be pointed, all right, to inform me that I've tendered in my resignation and thank you for the time given me to serve. All the other explanation, they are useless. So, Pia, what do you make of that? Uh, in, in the first place, let me just respectfully disagree with uh, my fellow panelists that what principally informed Mr. Uh, Wea and his people to arrive at uh, the resignation is just about the mere attendance of the UN General Assembly. Uh, from, 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 from my understanding of how um, America works, it's more than that. Even if you did not have a General Assembly taking place in September, Mr. Weir was, was, was compelled to act. What has happened, I'll put it this way, everything that you see happening is involuntary. So those who are resigning did not do so voluntarily. If Mr. Weir asked them to resign, Mr. Weir did not do so voluntarily. There's been a serious engagement between Washington and Monrovia on the attitude that the government was exhibiting towards these sanctioned officials. And Stephen, you, you know that, you're talking about global politics. We are not an ally on our own. We, we are all fitted in the global governance system. We're not an ally on our own. And we, yes, we are, we are a sovereign nation, but we, we basically nothing. If certain powers stand against us. So it was just a matter of time and Mr. We are going to be constrained to act. It is all that you see happening, right? So whether you have assembly down, no assembly, Mr. We are could not bear the force that was coming against him that these people had to go. And it's not just that. And to prove to you that that's the case, just watch and see. The General Assembly is coming to go. It's just in September. We anticipate additional batches of sanctions. And you can take it from me that even if they try to resist, eventually all those who will be sanctioned will find their way out of government. None will remain in government. Once you are sanctioned, you will find your way out of government. Specifically with the question you asked about CIFA. You know, I've had some respect for CIFA. I don't know the basic thing because he and I sat in class at LU when we read agronomy together. But, but I, have I, have not, yet, I, yet, I have not come to realize that 
FIFA is so petty. <coughs> and I, I'm wondering how a selective general of our country could be so petty. Because all you see coming from this guy is nothing but garbage and trash. That's all I see. Maybe you see something different. Trash and garbage. And if our Musa Dean, just yes, before I go in the, in the America, mm -hmm. if our Musa Dean, I'll be concerned. I will have a reason to be concerned. If you read that letter carefully, Stephen, you see how this guy is angry at Musa Dean. So much so, if you were in the door era, maybe Musa Dean would not speak to your house. Yeah, they say hurt people, they say hurt people, hurt people. Yeah, this guy is even telling President we are. That all the anti government people, even though they're in your government, but they anti that Musa Dean is the chairman. <laughs> Musa Dean is running a parallel government. I mean, you resigning that, that level of resignation, Stevie. Why are you trying to put Musa Dean in danger unnecessarily? Yes. yes. Who on earth will believe that the Americans, who are so meticulous with everything they do, will be sanctioning people because Musa Dean told them to sanction them? Isn't that being stupid? Isn't that being petty? That Musa Dean will hold it and solely be responsible for Sima Serena Seafors to be sanctioned? <laughs> There's a small history about Sifa that I'm going to remind all of you. I think 2007, Sifa wrote a bunch of garbage and trash about Ellen Johnson selling. <laughs> I don't know what any of you recall. I don't expect yeah, that. I don't know that begin. But see for did that. Eh? And eventually this guy found a way back and he said you are Ellen Jones, my own boss. He said you are Ellen Jones and he's loyal. How? He said, he said for one week. How? And you see the guy get re, get resigned. I see some of the two letters you so I know what you wrote both to. But yeah, I really need to see those two letters. Yeah. And for, wrote, yeah, I'm ready. Wrote, you, you're too worry. What see for wrote? I mean let me get conclusion with plenty. What see for wrote? To me, it's garbage. We didn't ask him for all that thing you were writing. <laughs> exactly. You, you, you have no, you have no stake in, in, in determining who the president will appoint. When the president was appointing you, see first, he didn't go beg people to tell him who the solution general should be. You go, you go. The president prerogative is to decide who will be who will replace. That's your business. You, you see your resolution out of whole report, like you giving an account of your stewardship. We of course is one thing. But that, that one I'm much of a problem because really you want the public to know what he did. But what is most stupid in that resignation letter is his onslaught on Musa Dean. And if I were Musa and knowing the history of Sifa, he got some, we potentially have some, let me be, let me be, let me be careful because I'm talking to a lawyer here. Let me not say like, I know all the facts, but we potentially, he's a dangerous guy. But with and to, be, to be a G2 commander in to be putting to be putting Musa Dean in harm's way as he's doing just to put in a resignation. If it doesn't give Musa Dean the cause to be concerned and watch his back, hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Pia. So let me come to you, Larman. Larman, then Ali, then Senator Dillon will close on this one. So Larman, the take. So if you if you um if you watch the video right you you will see and notice that everyone is trying to find a scapegoat. So to Musa Dane, I mean to to uh, Serena Sifa is Musa Dane, um, Minister Magil, former Minister, sanctioned Minister Magil, who found a scapegoat on this imaginary Magil that's out there that's using his name. Is, is, um, is there, is there he, he, Maggie, the men are out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and even within the party, right? He uses um his own radical, radical. So he's saying he didn't Maggie, the men are out there using and he calling himself McGill. McGill, yeah. Because the president always called him McGee. <laughs> <laughs> so you see everyone uh finding a scapegoat. I'm not quite sure of, of Bill Tuari who his scapegoat is, but um if you look at the three resolution today, you realize that it didn't come out of clear pure conscience um it was induced um it, it's a process based on political pressure um and the people level of anger that 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 you know they sent out there we are in his government but the modus operandi is not responding to the sanction the treaty aid like all of these cases that we've seen the many GFC reports 
the 16 billion, the 25 million, the, uh, the, the report on the Ministry of Agriculture and Leti, and all of these corrupt, corruption cases that have been inconclusive. The government has a willful intent not to fight corruption because they've been bad and swimming in the pool of corruption since the inception of this government. And that's why the first three to four, the four months when we are took office, you saw what he did. He started breaking homes, his own home on 9th Street and rebuilding it. He started acquiring countless of property. And then if the leaders take that action, right, what do you expect the followers to take? You saw uh, 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 Miguel doing the same, right? Crediting, I think, 250000 from LBDI. So it became a spread of corruption. The government's model of parenthes is, 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 is never to fight corruption. They do not have that political will. And we are remains last and to that fight. Thank you. Thank you. So let me come to you. Um, Senator, you can hear us. So let me come to Ali down. Senator, they don't you closer. You can hear me? My man, say yeah or no. Don't be shaking your head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> so, I was not going to come tonight, but I had to yeah, come. When you, say, when, you say, when you say, Senator, I said, I'm so tired just for work, but Eddie Miata had me jumping here, and I owe it to her and all of our people who follow and listen and need a clarification. Yeah, so let, let Ali finish, then we'll, we'll get you all the time. You're looking you great. <laughs> Thank so, you. Are you um, are and you my son Senate older Senate? than you. You're looking Thank great. Thank you, Stephen. Um, Public Senate, and then we are more stress. More, more, and then we are not me, man. We are not pressing you, and then we are not pressing you, and then we are not looking old, older than her, who older than you, like what you say. You say I'm looking great. Me, me. I said I'm looking great. Yeah, I mean, great, me, great. We're pointing in Great means great. Give me great. That's a good one. So let you have a let you have a Bo Ali. Bo Ali. All right. Thank you, Stephen. Good evening to everyone. Uh, you know, I tried when I saw the letter on the WhatsApp today, I tried reading it and I was reading out loud to my friends. I didn't notice or realize the length of the letter until I click on the blue it's, it's a dossier. You know, on the WhatsApp when you read it and say click on more. Mm -hmm. And then I saw the whole novel I, and I decided to cut it <laughs> off. But you know, from day one, um, <laughs> from day one, Serena Seafold, I had issue with uh, uh, Councillor Musa Dean. Mm -hmm. Serena C. Falls, I always thought that he is the most qualified and best experienced international lawyer in Liberia. Yeah, he's a member of the Japanese Korea Indian Bar. In yeah, he's a member of all the bars. He's the only accredited international lawyer in Liberia who can mm -hmm. plead law before they, 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 they quote they, they the are Russia quote the Hague. And so, yeah, he should be yeah, and so he should be justice minister and not uh, Councillor Frank Musa Dane. And by that, he has been on a spree of undermining Councillor Musa Dane from day one. So they've never been on turn. So Sifa thinks that anything that happens to him at the Ministry of Justice is Musa <laughs> Dane that did it to him. But well, I'm not sure it was Musa Dane who told the Americans that he see for that been engaging into corruption. I am not even sure either if it is Musa Din who told him to engage into corrupt practices. What I see is a desperate man finding scapegoats. It's a desperate guy who character has been tinted and he is finding someone to just put it on and tell the public, no, all the thing they thought to me is lie. When you read through the letter, he is a friend to say, oh, the Americans lie on me. He doesn't want to say that. Maybe the Americans who have brought all, or they will bring out the evidence that they have. So he's shifting everything to Musa Din, who he has seen as rivals. And he even stated in a letter that at a certain point in time, Musa Din will not speak to him. But you know, I do not see it as a professional letter. 
No, you can not. simply do your resignation to the president. I just say I'm resigning. And then just go and write to the public, state the reasons why. Tell the public the reasons why you resign, whether it's for the sanction or who made they put a sanction on you. And then he didn't stop there. Then he telling the president who, who to, who to appoint be the uh, solicitor general. So you can see clearly, yeah. You can see clearly that he wants the president to bring somebody who will continue to fight a council of Musa Din. Well, that's their problem, but I don't see it as professional. Uh, they are sanctioned. And I believe I, at this time, the fact that the president suspended them and said they were going to be investigated, the Liberians are interested in knowing and understanding the outcome of those investigations. It should not just end with resignation that because they have resigned now therefore everything is solved that cloud remain if i were one of them i would have asked the president to commission the investigation so that they can be able to clear their names or else mm -hmm. it's going to follow them forever so jeff before you go i heard we we, we your news that you 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 think you're contesting is it true You can hear us? I'm not thinking. Uh, you running? My computer I've made up my mind. In. Yes. <laughs> All right. That's, that's when you just you signed off. And, 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 and yeah, I'm not thinking. Press? I've made up my mind and I am contesting. I am, I am contesting for district number five. Maserato? Okay. So my mind has been made on and I am in the process. Thank you. All right, best wishes. Um, we will find time and talk to you more on, on, on your ambition and and, and 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 we want to wish you best wishes. So Senator, and I know Anthony Miata spark struck a call. That's why you you <laughs> you you're, you're here quickly. But he knew I was going and it's and it's good that uh, she she brought you here. Um so I know you want to. I know you want to comment on what she said. So we'll give you, we'll give you at least three, four minutes to talk about your issue and what and, and respond to it. And because uh, we will follow you today on your, on, on in your hearing, and I, I thought you provided a, 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 a great deal of clarity on the matter in terms of uh, the old law, the report, the two-page report you guys did, and how somebody criminally took. The signature page and attach it to the old to the existing um uh, pension scheme so i uh, you know we thought that clarity was important but uh, i think let me let me let me yield to you so that you can in three to four minutes talk about your so that we can go around the hall i want after you've done we'll ask everybody to give the the uh to, to, to do a guess on who they think will replace the three officials so after that we'll go around the hall everybody will give a guess on who will replace the three officials and then we'll move to the next topic. So, Senator, the floor. Oh, you, don't, you don't think the, you don't think, even if it is for one, two minutes, you don't think the, the, the senator should comment on the issue he met us discussing before he so goes. So, yeah, that's why I gave him four minutes to comment on everything. Oh, okay. Go ahead, uh, Senator. You can hear us? Thank you. I like the way you're giving me time. <clears throat> I want you on the time too. But let me say um, good let me say good evening to our listeners in Liberia and good day where we are. George Lobo, uh, my first time in the class with you. Let me say welcome and thank you for filling in. I mean you are a very valuable panelist. Come on anytime, George. We're trying welcome to bring on regular one main one regular. I panelist. hope I am loud and clear. Um look. The resignations today is nothing. President, we are uh, suspended these people and coming in? No, go ahead. Are we all? Yeah, go ahead. We hear you. We hear you. We are hearing you, Senator. I've been okay. 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 okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I just did one small office and I'm trying to test it in my house. So that, that's why. Uh, but uh, 
President, we have suspended these people and uh, uh, announced an investigation. And until he can impanel an investigation, name the investigators, tell us the scope of the investigation, anything about resignation is unacceptable. It's unacceptable. It is not enough. And we'll continue to press on and push on. And when you are accused of stealing $1 million, don't just resign and go home with the $1 million. It's not sufficient. You must account for it all. The presumption of innocence, uh, a privilege you have on right, you have under the law should be respected. But there's a place where you should prove your innocence through an investigative body and, when necessary, through a court prosecution. The reasons and justifications for these sanctions are detailed. They are outlined. They are visible. They are clear. You can touch it. You can feel it. So for somebody to say, oh, you know, uh, the body is too much on me, so you guys can go home with your loot, and then later on when the librarian people forget about it after two, three days, then you can come around, you can go contest if you want, you can use the loot and all that stuff. And don't forget, these guys were also sanctioned for gross human rights violation. Mm -hmm. It is nothing petty to play with. So President, we are, has a responsibility and a duty, a burden upon him to impanel that investigation. And I would encourage him to impanel that investigation and blend it with international independent folks so it can lend credence and credibility there too. President, we are as a panel and ask for in international investigation before the crew report. Of course, nothing much came out of it, but there's a precedent. And if he thinks uh, this is a joke, I think Daniel said it earlier, and let me re-emphasize. President, we are effectively a sanctioned. When my chief of staff is sanctioned, hmm, he went about those things. President, we are himself is effectively, in, in essence, is sanctioned. And if he doesn't take this seriously, he's going to meet a very, very huge, big blow, bigger blow. And the list is coming. And from what I said, I will stop it right there, talking about list is coming. Because I don't want to, to betray confidence and trust. Tell me, tell me, tell me, so let me just stop it right there. To lose 100 pounds between now and tomorrow. <laughs> My friend, families, families will be rejected travels. <sighs> if a president we are doesn't take action, he doesn't take concrete steps and action to bring these people to justice, to bring them to book. There will be additional action. The, the, the murder of Imadra Bate Nyeswa is not going free. The mysterious killings or deaths of the auditors is not going unnoticed. The formation of s killers to, to play the role of state actors, like General Power, uh, 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 CFR mm -hmm. Normal, yeah. and you name the rest, they are not going unnoticed. There will be consequences. Dire, D-R-R-E, dire consequences. The President, we are thinks this is a joke. If the country thinks this is a joke, and so I want to, I'm not going to glorify, President, we are receiving resignations today. It was planned. All three the same day, it was calculated. It was planned, oh, yeah. calculated, and played out so that the discussion can be about their resignation rather than their investigation, their punishment. Resignation is no punishment. Mm -hmm. So that's my take on that. I'm not going to glorify President. We are receiving these people's resignation. All the president they got the money, the human rights abuses they were accused of, they must face the consequences.
so that he can serve as the terror to others. That when you do it, and if our system, our, our, our lacking in political will from the executive to act, from the legislature to act, big powers coming. Big powers are watching and they will act. Mm -hmm. Where America sanctions you, Great Britain, <laughs> yeah, the European Union, they all kind of honor and respect it. So the thing is a joke. Watch and see. So much so for that. And then I followed you when I was coming and I thought I owe it to you. That's one of the key reasons. And not only you, but everybody who similarly listened to it. When we were on the show, I insisted that the document containing my signature was a committee report and not a bill. I read Molly Passaway's post, and he too was not informed at the time. If you follow his latest comments on my post, he said, oh, but if you have done all this explanation ever since or before, then we're not going to go into all of these outbursts and outrage because there are people, some people in the media, some politi political opponents did what was just unethical and criminal. Uh, we have had a session today. This matter has been sufficiently dealt with and clarified. But for the sake of the audience and you, and the matter, I, I will send this to you through PR. This is the document. This is the committee report addressed to the protein. This is not a law. This is not a bill. Two-page document containing my signature and committee members. We did an analysis of the pension law, the retirement law, the current existing retirement law. We did an analysis. And somebody went and took the second page containing signatures of committee members who deliberated on the proposed amendment, amendment for the law and went and attached it and attach it to the existing law. This is the existing law that was passed in 2003. And this 2003 law came out of the 1972 retirement package for president, vice president, chief justice, member of the, members of the judiciary as categorized and members of the legislature from speaker, pro tem, deputy speaker. This is the existing law, 2003, that covers all of this. They took this law and took this second page, the committee report, and attached it to their bill and said, they law, their sound law, sound bill into law. That was ignorant, criminal, purposeful, because I'm a target. I'm a target. And, and the reason they did it, and something I don't even know how to say, when people, when people who are thought knew what the process of lawmaking is or should be, lawmakers will sign on law. If lawmakers could sign their signatures on law and it pass into law, the first thing I was going to pass with my signature is my bill calling for lawmakers to make 5,000 or less. If lawmakers' signatures, committee reports can pass law, pass bill into law, I will have done that. But they do all of these things to diminish our voice but hoping that it would do so. And then matter, it wasn't so. We took the 1972 law and compare it with the, the 2003 law passed under the last days of Judy Bryan. Mm -hmm. which is currently effective on the current budget and in previous budget from the UP time, the, the government paying former lawmakers. Former lawmakers. On the current budget, there's $1.9 million in that budget for former lawmakers. And the way the 2003, 2003 law was crafted, it is just not economically good for the country because any former lawmaker, no matter how long you serve, if you serve for three months, if you enter somebody's term, like an Anna Geraldine Doe term, 
is due to abuse and was not re-elected under the current law, I am qualified for benefit under the current law. And the current law says 50% of what the current law lawmakers are making. That means if I, the way I ended Jared in those terms, if I were not re-elected, I am qualified for 50% of what the current lawmakers are making for serving for one year. And if I don't, if I don't take another position in government until I die, I'm qualified for 50% of what the current law may go make. Under the current law that we decided to review to, to give meaning, reduce the percentage, and, re, and, and give meaning to it so that we can reduce it, even the number of former lawmakers. What constitutes qualification, eligibility for retirement? If there will be any. In fact, the debate today decided that we, some of us, decided that look, this is controversial. A good that is taking to the public. The public did not know before that there was a law existing and formal law because uh, uh, even the gentleman for Cape Mahu said for nine months is taking retirement benefit as a formal well, law. They don't want to. So we decided to give meaning, meaning, meaning for it. Who did what then? I mean, so it was just so the media. Was it yeah, it was just the media, right? It was not anybody. Yeah, folks in the media, I think it came from, from it, it, it might have come from, it might have come from within. Okay, yeah, because nobody would just It might have come from within. My signature was on that, and the people, they, they know that it, this is. Yeah, it must, it, it must have come from within. Because once my signature is on a document, my signature was on the document that voted no, the only senator, the only senator that voted no on the Senate committee report that cleared Samuel Twer from role form criminality. I was the only senator who voted no. Two, three of my colleagues abstained. Senator Lawrence was out of the country Two other senators were out of the country. I was the only senator on the record who voted no. That document did not come to the public. It did not come to the public. Once I signed that committee report for us to say, what qualifies you as a former lawmaker eligible for retirement benefit, even if it is one dollar? Let's define it. So at the matter, we define what constitutes honorable retirement. Honorable retirement, two things. Honorable retirement means you must have served for minimum 12 years and above to qualify you for 10%. The current law says whether you serve for one month, one day, one week, once you leave the Isara in our office constitutionally and left from there after one day, you are a former lawmaker under the current law, you are qualified for 50% of what current lawmakers earn. So we said no. Let me go further. In keeping with the US retirement package for former lawmakers, they also consider age. If the minimum service is 12 years, two terms in the house, nine years in the Senate plus three years, in the second term. That means the law we, we put together on the committee, we are saying Senator Dillon served for nine years and he was not re-elected. What he had not met the 12 years minimum service, he's not qualified, even though he's a former lawmaker, but he's not eligible for, uh, uh, for benefit. So Senator Dillon, if I didn't contest in 2029 and I turn over in 2030, if we pass what our committee recommended, I'm not qualified, even though I served for now 10 years. The current law says even if you serve for one day, you are qualified. We said no. Two, we said even the 12 years minimum, the meaning two terms in the house, if you were elected at the age of 25. And then you are re-elected and serve for 12 years. That means you are being 30, you will be 37 years old after serving for 12 years. And if you did that contest again and say I'm retiring, I'm tired, the current law said, I mean the law who will be proposing say 
you are qualified by for 12 years, but you're 37 years old. Is a 37 year old age for retirement? If the current laws, if the law say you entitled to 50 percent of what current law make lawmakers are making, and you are 35 years old and you serve for 12 years, you can take what said now. 37 year old, and if God keeping you on earth up to 70 year old, from 37 year old, you are qualified for 50 percent of what current law may not make. So we decided to, to, to also attach age. Your age, if you serve more than 12 years, 18 years, 20 years, then you are entitled to a certain percentage, be far below 50 percent. That's what we're proposing. If you serve for 12 years, you're entitled to 10 percent. If you, if you are 60 years old and above, and you serve for one term or two terms, then you qualify for 30%. Everything we're doing was below the 50% threshold as contained in the current law. But the way we crafted it, it was going to reduce the number of persons because not everybody who is a former lawmaker has honorably retired. Lastly, lastly, we define what constitutes honorable retirement. If George Lobo served for 12 years, as a member of the house. And he went back for re-election for the third term and the people did not re-elect him. He has not honorably retired. He was fired by his employers. We define honorable retirement to me, to me, you serve 12 years and above and your tenure and and you say, I have served, I'm not running again, I'm retiring. Two things, 12 years and above, and also your age, 50 years and above. Those two things will qualify you. Honor the Lord, honor the bill that we're trying to refine. So as to save this country, there are former lawmakers who are taking advantage of the current law. If we take the current law into consideration, the budget will be, and calculating the current former lawmakers, is about $9 million. During the budget hearing, the, the, the government had to negotiate with these former lawmakers to break it down to $800 per person. So we put $1.9 million in the budget for elected officers who served in keeping with the current law. We decided that we will cut it down. Now, because of all of this public outcry and all of this new information coming and, 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 and suggestions coming, we have determined today, few of us, that instead of all this wahala, we move from our law because of the law. Just amend the law, repeal the provision that says when you are a former lawmaker, you entitled to one percent. Don't give any former lawmaker, including Darius Dillo, any if I serve for 30 years. If you were not president, vice president, speaker, chief justice, deputy speaker, pro tem associate justices, and judges on the in the judiciary. If you were not one of those officials, former lawmaker, you can serve for 29 years like Prince Johnson. You finish all the benefit and things we're getting already, we won't reduce hey, all right. Or let's pay into a pension scheme to NASCO. So when we reach pension area, yeah, I think, I think, I think that's, we can I think tap into that yeah, opportunity. It, it so that, that is where we are. Then where we are, we're very, very strong on it today, Senator Lawrence, Senator uh, Jonathan Borja, Silway, uh, uh, Senator Jeremiah Kuhn, and a, a whole lot of us. Why other people say we should tweak the law to reduce the percentage so that it, and, and, and to reduce the number of persons qualified, just everybody, not everybody. We think we are resolving to repeal that provision of the law to remove all former lawmakers. Let's keep it as president, Vice President, and another argument was that why is President we are not and President um, uh, Taylor not getting his benefit under the current law? I think uh, Pia will remember. But I said, you look at the law, she said, Charles Taylor didn't pay himself. The government was corrupt and he paid himself, so she would not honor the law. We thought that was wrong. So we decided to harmonize this law, make sense of it, and then save the country cover. But then okay. people went criminally, deliberately, attached a committee report signature 
Just like CPP framework document. You take one segment of page from some place, you attach it to another document that is criminal. It's criminal. Lawmakers, individual lawmakers, don't sign law when it is passed. When it is passed from the Senate, it is the president of the Senate who is the vice president of the Republic of Liberia, or the pro tem in the absence of the vice president and the secretary of the Senate that will sign that bill into law after it is voted. From the House, it is out of the speaker or the deputy speaker in the absence of the speaker and the chief clerk. The two houses will sign in that light and then send it to the president for approval or for veto, if the president will so veto. So for anybody, what a media institution, political opponent, taking a committee report signature page to attach it to an existing law and put it in the public to say, yet a wicked law, evil law that Darrell Dillon, mm -hmm. they say Darrell Dillon, no. Darrell Dillon, fine. <laughs> if I could sign anything that would pass in the law, if I had the authority by constitutional uh, means, I will assign that five thousand dollar bill for us to make five thousand or less as lawmaker. So that's Thank the clarity you. I wanted to make. I have to be a little winning. I have to be a little winning and long about it. And then the not only just for you, but for our listening audience. I'm sure maybe a judge global still won't beat me up. I'm here. Well, let me let me make one clarification. Oh, oh, I got a question on, on this. I do because let, let me you, John, John, let me hold you one minute. Let me make one clarification. One of the issue with Taylor was uh, they, they said Taylor did not honorably retire. Taylor was was forced into exile, he didn't, and he did not even he did not even complete his tenure. So they talk, you know, because the law talks about being honorably retired, and then also what I would advise the Senate is even if you're moving towards a pension scheme where people are making contribution, still, still, I would still, advise still, that you still, wait. You don't see a point, a point of... A yeah, point let me finish of, yeah, you're talking. Point, yeah, but I, if you finish, then, then no need, there will be no need for the point. No, no, you can... The reason why the senator was allowed is because Ente Miata raised an issue about him in his absence. But you have two talking points today. Now that the senator has clarified, I got a lot of questions, but I can't ask you now because then yeah, we'll I, I, to the next time. Uh -huh. Because I got, I got question the next time the senator come on the show, I will yeah. come find the chance to ask those yeah, questions. Yeah, but let me let me let's speak to the schedule on what we wanted to discuss after the senator. So I can go now. No, you can go here in the show, man. Tomorrow session will be over. We have session all day today. No, 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 Senator. Let me lay on my my advice. My advice is. If you are if you are looking at a, a a a pension scheme where people make contribution, you have to wait until after 2023 elections because 15 senators will be up for re-election. They only have less than a year there. You don't know whether they will come back. So you'll wait for that conversation to come back on the floor to be after 2023, where people now will have the bulk of the senator there will have out of six or nine years. Then people can make contributions, but if you so if you pay so uh, yeah yeah is a catch twenty two with that suggestion. It will wait for after twenty twenty two. I mean after twenty twenty three, there are plenty of people going for real election will not be real letter. They so they they they're, 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 they're lost. They may not. They will be qualified under the current law. They will be qualified to make fifty percent of what current law members making. It will be added to the current yes. former law members. That are already benefiting on the so current law. Repeal the, repeal the, the current law. But then you make the provision that calls for former members of the legislature. Yeah. Once yeah. you were not speaker, you were not deputy speaker, you were not pro tem. No former lawmaker, including Darius Dillon, where I become former. No former lawmaker. Here, yeah, I think we are. Everyone better to be a Senator, we'll, we'll, we'll Senator, Senator, Senator Dillon, yeah. yeah. before you leave. I think yes, well, my yes, my my recommendation to you. George, you got what you got 10 seconds. Get 10 seconds. You guys just repeal what you want to repeal. Let's leave it like that. That would be the Thank best you. thing. And then when they do resurface in the future, we can have those conversations. <laughs> You'll just go from there and that will end it. But I think Thank please you. provide all the document, the committee report, so we can have it. Because one of the problems is yeah. the information out there. 
Let's have that committee report so we see the recommendations. Stevie, you got a report, Senator John. Yeah, I was sending to you, George. I was sending to you. You got a two day committee report. Let's move quickly. We were running out of time. So I was I was hoping, I don't know whether we can do in 10 seconds each for people to, to make their um to make their guesses to see who will replace who, but if 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 if, if we don't have the time, let's move to the next topic. Yeah, let's move to the next topic. Those those who replace those who will resign with the government. May I just bring a point to Senator? Uh Senator, yeah, you are yeah. not here, but Daniel came up with uh uh, uh interesting suggestion. The House and the Senate, the legislative body, is supposed to have press people. Because when I look at interaction, whether it's in the Senate or in the House, the whole balcony is full of press people who we assume will give the public this information. The information is not coming out. The enemies are there slanting and skewing the in, uh, uh, information to discredit people like yourself. So I'm saying going forward, every single day of the workings of the legislature should be public knowledge. Yeah, this public and then the other. So uh, since I became senator, and I mean, I'm not arrogant about it, but I would take, I would take small pride in it, uh, homo pride though. The Senate now has a live Facebook page, the Liberal Senate. What we are concluding also, every labor version of the Liberal Senate in the last one year or so is live on the Senate, Liberal Senate Facebook page. Tomorrow session, and in, in addition on this very page. And the class will know that. It is a commitment that the class will know that will also from beginning for tomorrow, be bringing the Senate live to the people. We are also concluding that what I will stay in session for four hours, five hours, it will be live on the radio, on bourgeois radio. We're arranging with bourgeois radio so that we can pay for the slot. So that, because the four page Africa, the Spoon Network, the Cool FM, everybody in our Senate every day, you see the pool of media people, fabric. But when everybody has a mission, Yes, when everybody right. has a side already, mm -hmm. today Front Page Africa carry a news story on me. Yes. News story. News story, I don't care how you like the person, the ABC of news. You must balance your news. If it is a news story, contact the other person that the news is about. If it is an editorial, you uh, editorial last in your feeling, you anything you want to say about somebody in your edit in your editorial, you can act. I mean, you don't need to get the person out. But if it is a news story, this person says was here for this other person, contact the person. From this Africa doesn't do that. The heritage newspaper carries story on me today. We are contacting me. I called Malcolm Joseph. And I called the vice president of the president of Labrador to call their attention to it. They've been doing it for a while. I've been ignoring it. And we said we realized that everybody has taken us out, whether the media or not. That's why we're doing a class yeah, video that to bring ourselves to the to, people. Yeah, at least we'll get our own platform where we can talk about. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So, you know so, that they started getting angry. You know that they started getting angry. Why Senator doing talk show? Senator had a good talk show because when Senator Dillon voted against the stimulus package, a few other senators, those media institutions didn't carry. When we voted against the printing, the premature and with no convincing proof and, and, and reason to print money, when we voted against it, they did not single out. When we voted against the Senate decision to clear some of the of road from t they, they didn't carry it. But when they, took, when they found a committee report to attach to an existing bill, because I signed a committee report, everybody ran away. And then they said, oh, what they don't do talk show. I've been running with a talk show. And I will speak to my people. It's even powerful to be direct with your people and speak with them. Everybody said, Senator, they don't want to hear it from you. We don't hear it from you. The boy hear it from me. Some boy in the media said, So what do you do? I'm the leader on the block. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, sir. So, so, uh, so, uh, so uh, I, I, I beg you before you go for because for me, I'm a communication man. So I like to, 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 to give people the right direction. The comment Daniel made. Is beyond just going live. That's not communication. 
the legislature is a serious place. Who is your communication director? <laughs> Who's your communication director? When you do live for two hours, three hours, it's, you know, Abraham Johnson. You know, 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 know Abraham Johnson, right? From ERB, used to be at ERB. Yeah, I know him, but I, I don't want to. I don't want to discuss him because if, if he's not making the impact that he ought to yeah, make, right? Not, so the point I'm trying to make is, if you go in live for two hours, three, you better believe that as we own this thing, people just say now watching for some people just say now two hours or interrupted. So but they're coming in, coming or coming in. So the, the, the communication person at the also represented the communication person right. the other Sunday, they gotta have the requisite competence. They gotta do press briefing. They gotta yeah, do regular and do press, press briefing. briefing and communicate. If the person is competent, do you know what they have to do? They don't does not have to be right. for himself. That right. has to be communicating the, the Senate's decisions. You'll be reaching out to the public. They don't have that. I think yeah. ready to try it, or I think ready to do a little bit. I don't run that that play. Get out of the way to information. That they don't just tell me why I know that I want Johnson there. That, that's but the Senate got a press and public affairs guy in his office, right? It's not just about going live. You need, you need to look. You have spend money and track competence. That's what happened in the U.S. Congress. Those two people in that play are congressional star. They are well schooled. Some of them schooled more than the congressmen and women. Oh yeah. Exactly. They do it because they want output. They want efficiency. They want productivity. You have to do it. Play the money spent on all kind of things. I play your own budget, the Senate budget, they have, they have your personal in communication and fan competence. That's all I can say. It doesn't need exactly. yeah, that, uh, uh, even, yeah. even, even in the recruitment of staff, you need to increase staff salary down there to attract yeah. serious professionals. Well, you know, and trust me, it will happen. Yeah, if you're talking about this bill, if you get an economist, if you get if you get a public policy person in, in the Senate there, they will review all the things and provide the argument instead of your job. Everybody just go do their own private knowledge. Don't you hire someone expertise. because they help you to campaign doing right. that. Exactly. Don't do it. That's the problem. Well, that 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 so but but, 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 but Steve, before you go ahead, let me just say this. Let me just say this. Okay, let me the department, okay. the department, the department, the department of press, seven seven seconds. Seven. the department of press who have voluntarily spoken to the, the public about the controversy surrounding this document that was in the public, but you know why they wouldn't do so? Because they take direct instruction from the president pro temporary. Once Darius Delon and Yomli Kanga Lawrence are on the hook, they've been criticized by the public. Those people are seen to be people who work for people who support the government. They will not say anything about it, they certify them. Okay? So, I mean, it's a complicated situation. There are efforts, there, were, there are efforts by Senator Lawrence, who's the chair on rules all in administration to professionalize the press department, but those efforts have been undermined. Because people believe that they need a student in the department to speak for them. This thing, just a call from the department, a release to say what is in the public doesn't represent what the Senate passed on, who are killed this whole thing. But they're lying to, to, to train on because Dillon and Yomli were the one being criticized. So you see the division at all, at all levels. Daniel, yeah. next so time I said, you don't send people like us. Yeah, yeah, so let's go to the the fact. Next time, yeah, they don't send all the original documents. Yeah, and that way, when we're speaking, you, we have it. That's what you do on. next Let's time. Let's move on to the next topic. Um, so the, then the next topic, we'll look at the National Elections Commission, right? Uh, we read in the news that the um, the National Elections Commission awarded the contract to um, a group called EKEMP, E-K-E-M-P, to do the biometric. We also learned that that group has proceeded to include on their website the logo of the National Elections Commission, meaning that they are now partners. Now, what we don't know is that there, there whether there exists a, a a a how a contract and what and, and what how they got the contract, the PPCC process, right? And we also know that uh, a local paper had reported the Daily Observer reported that the U.S. government issued a diplomatic note to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs showing concern about the company the company that was awarded the contract now the u.s embassy this today issued a press statement to clarify that they did not send any diplomatic note but instead and let me let me let me put that press statement up and read it and then we can pick up with the conversation so let me let me let me share the press statement um So this is the uh, this is the president by the um, by the U.S. government. 
by the U.S. Embassy, and it reads thus. It says, um, press statement for immediate release um, September 12, 2022. It says, the U.S. Embassy in Monrovia has seen the reporting on the next biometric VR system and would like to correct the record. At no point in time did the embassy send the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Liberia an official diplomatic note or any other communication with the request to acquire a sample or specimen of the 2023 National Voter Registration Card. We understand that no decision has yet been made on awarding a contract for the biometric system but that the process is ongoing and according to the press, the Public Procurement and Concession Commission, the PPCC, is examining potential contracts. It goes further to say, we urge the PPCC to fulfill its mandate of ensuring integrity and transparency in the procurement process so that the Liberian public gets full value for money in the use of public funds. It goes further to say the United States and Liberia share the democratic values, including the commitment to free, fair, and transparent elections, and free, fair, and transparent elections. Our mission works closely with partners in the government and in civil society, focusing on next year's important national elections, and we emphasize the necessity of nonviolence and transparency in democratic societies. We remind our international and local partners of the importance of data security, especially regarding sensitive Liberia voter, Liberian voting data. So um, that's that's the um, that's the communication from the U.S. Embassy. Now it's, a, it's rather tricky here. If you if you listen to the George, you will start us on this one. If you listen to the to the reading of the letter, the the why it is true the embassy is refuting on one end a, a media report, but this is actually a, a diplomatic note. The embassy is within the same press statement cautioning the National Elections Commission, the PPCC, about the data integrity mm -hmm. for next year, about the procurement process, and that the PPCC should be transparent, and that the United States is concerned about the biometric elections the biometric voter registration next year. So this in itself is a diplomatic note. So even if they didn't send one, this press statement clearly shows that the United States government has serious vested interest in 2023. So I'll go with George and Demiata, and then I'll go to Larma, Daniel, Ali, and Pia will close us on this one, then we'll, we'll go to the phone line. So George, your take. Uh, one Steve, I think, I think our international partners are concerned. We must not forget the United States government played a major role in, in showing that Liberia was restored to a functioning democratic society. Uh, they pay heavily. They, they spend their money in there. Uh, you know, the restructure of the armed forces of Liberia, the 25 million came from the U.S. government. Uh, so they understand the amount of investment being made in Liberia. We can go back to the $257 million compact grant we got some of the money that went towards the reconstruction of the hydro and other projects in the country. And they understand elections in Liberia and what have happened, especially with our history. Having said that, I think the, if you read some of the reasons our previous government, our former three government officials were sanctioned, Steve, Natana mm -hmm. Magee has been involved with, with undermining the PPCC. So the letter, the, this press statement addressed that issue that they know that contracts have been awarded uh, through Kwasa means. And so they wanted it, they thought it was to bring that to the public and just caution the government. Uh, I think anyone who has been involved with what is happening in the country, it is important. The National Elections Commission itself giving its nefarious and dubious dealing in the past, well, we can't ignore that. The current National Election Commission boss is an indictee of corruption who is unbuilt by Musa ability. So we can't sit there and holler, like we don't know what is happening. The 2017 election, the, the, the Supreme Court ruled that there were cleanups that needed to be done at the National Elections Commission. Sadly for us, those things have, have, have not been done. And we're talking about biometric system. So I think the U.S. government thought it wise to just caution the government 
that we have a stake in this election because it's important. Uh, there are people here, as a matter of fact, even because of time, but there's a number that has been set up. I will send it to you. So hopefully Wednesday we can share it. Liberians living in America, uh, if you want to call Congress people now with regards to your country, there's a phone line being set up where you can call and the U.S. Congress will answer. So the people are interested because at the end of the day, whatever happened, over 400 in remittances come from the, US, the United States of America. So obviously, I mean, there's a need to ensure that stability remains in the country. And that is why the U.S. government is concerned. But the CDC government, knowing, the, knowing how they do business, we will not be surprised. So we can go from the guys at Legion. So we just hope that they adhere to some of these things and pay attention because the U.S. government is sending a warning shout out to them. That's what I think. Thank you. And to me, other. I'm glad you came out with that uh, statement from the U.S. Embassy because I read the other statement vis-a-vis -vis their concerns, etc. For me, uh, hearing the explanation, etc., I'm concerned because this is getting very dangerous. This is getting very dangerous, and and it seems to to be becoming a norm where people sit down, write up stories that are fake news and send it through social media, et cetera. Because my, when I read the first information from whoever sent it, my attitude was, well, you know, what is that to do with our business with the biometric, et cetera, et cetera. Um, when you read the story, maybe it's just me. When you read the story vis-a-vis -vis the PPCC, et cetera, it seems somebody there wants the contract. Somebody there is not pleased that the Chinese company has been given the contract. And, um, you know, because nothing in Liberia is uh, for the interests of Liberia. Nothing is in our country's interest. Um, somebody definitely is hoping uh, that the PPCC can give a no objection, etc. Etc. Um, I wouldn't like to think there is an anti-Chinese feeling, because the Chinese have been in Liberia since 2006. They've rendered our people assistance. They've set up infrastructure for us, and like everybody else, yes, they want something. But at least they have come and shown us what they can do. So I I, I don't see the awarding of a contract to the Chinese uh, uh, says mediocrity, mediocrity or substandard or whatnot, because the Chinese have built some of our major roads over the past nine years. Our famous ministerial complex is a gift from the Chinese. So we should watch people putting out information, distorted information that really can cause ripples within the society. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, Daniel, then Larma. Well, Steve, I, I, have, I have consistently called on the opposition to be very mindful about vote breaking and possible manipulations. Mindful in the sense that they begin to take steps that will significantly mitigate the possibility of uh, the real occurrence of what we witnessed in 2017. Uh, against that backdrop, we encourage on this platform, we encourage the opposition to put into place a parallel vote monetary mechanism. As we all know, elections are never rigged on election day. There are processes that lead to elections. For example, NEC has announced that the, the voter registration process will begin in December. We encourage opposition to monitor observe meticulously the process. Beyond what NEC, what NEC is doing to aid and abate the rigging of the vote in 2023 by the WEAD administration, there's also another plan to inflate numbers of voters that will turn out to register in the Southeastern region. We said that. So I think the Americans are concerned and nobody should read a statement on his face and say that it is just, it is just uh, intended to 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 report the publication in the Data Observer newspaper because this morning 
the journalist who wrote the story sent it to me and I told him how factual he said, he said, I'm an investigative journalist. Uh, I'm, I'm going to withhold his name for now, but he told me that the story is factual. So when Stevie said that the statement does not debunk the, st the story, the publication by, by, by the observer, because in the last paragraph, the Americans are also indicating that they are concerned about data security. Which, I mean, which, I mean, the, the, the fact that the American system could be manipulated by Russia, right? the election abroad, Donald Trump, the fact that their system could be manipulated, what more about Liberia? This is the first time that we want to migrate from manual registration to biometric registration. Do we have the infrastructure in place? So, I mean, bulk of the funding for elections are not provided by the Liberian government. It is, that money is provided by the partners. Okay, so the partners are now saying that they are following the procurement process. How was the contract awarded to this Chinese company? So that statement, in effect, is questioning the awarding of this contract to a Chinese company. They are hoping that the procurement process will follow, in closing, they're saying that they are concerned about data security. The Americans cannot do, continue to do for us what we're supposed to do for ourselves as a country and as opposition community. It will say supinely, and put our hands between our legs and do nothing. David Etta Brown Lassana does not have the integrity to preside over this election. She's already compromised herself. Here is somebody who has been indicted by this government for, for double dealing, a warning contract to her brother, a company owned by her brother. There's an indictment hovering over her head. So you do not, you cannot squarely rely on the credibility of a commission headed by someone like David Etta Brown Lassana to conduct credible elections in Liberia. But again, what I want to say to Mr. Weah and David Ethel Brown Lassana, if you think that the opportunity given you to be president or to even be chairman of the Board of Commissioner or member of the Board of Commissioner at the National Election Commission, if you think it's an opportunity for you to collude with Judge Weah to plunge the peace and stability of this country into mess by attempting to rig this election, I mean, we can only remind you of the history that we've hired. The last time this country went to war, where 14, I mean, I mean, thousands of people were killed. We ripped up pregnant women, babies from their stomach. We used intestines to screen out gates at checkpoints and everything. It was because somebody, somebody, in a little thinking, decided to rig the 1985 election. And that led to deadly consequences for this country. As I speak to you, this country is yet to recover from the deadly consequences of the civil war that were birthed by the decision of the dual administration to rig the 1985 election. So the credibility, the sustainability of our peace and democracy is strongly reliant on the integrity, the credibility of the electoral process. So this is no time for us to joke. Opposition forces need to begin to speak out because I, for one, Given my experience with David Etta Brown Lassana, how incompetent the entire members of the Board of Commissioners are, how they have even failed to address a simple matter in the Liberty Party case, how they have solid mobility, they have made the commission to be a party to the dispute in the Liberty Party. I have zero respect for the people at the commission, and I want to encourage Ambassador Joseph Yuma Baga, who is the leading opposition figure, not to sit back and watch David Etta Brown Lassana and your commission takes steps to plunge this country into a mess. They are they are they are planning to systematically rig the election, giving a contract to a Chinese company whose performance record we don't know. If the data was ever not published, this story would the public wouldn't have known that NEC has already awarded this contract, such a very important contract to a company that comes from nowhere, right? These processes should be open, the public should be aware, political parties. On the RPCC platform, must be aware that look, there's an ongoing procurement process for the biometric registration, and there are companies involved. Political parties are not aware. Okay, so the scene where the other brand went and, and gave contract to her brother for who she was indicted is the scene where they are surreptitiously awarding the contract to the Chinese company. So the Americans are telling us that look, we are concerned about the procurement process, we are concerned about data security. When the American begin to speak that way, then you need to listen. Because the sanctions we're talking about here are not only are not only limited to officials in the executive branch of government, people who want to use that position to undermine democracy 
And David Edward Brown is no exception. They can also be sanctioned by the U.S. government if you attempt to use your position to undermine democracy because the, any mistake that will be made by the election commission ahead of 2023 will plunge the country into a mess and the Americans are not prepared for that because they have invested so much in this country. The NDI, other development partners are working to support the election in this country and they should not sit to allow David Edward Brown and her commission to proceed unilaterally in awarding contracts. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, Lama, let's try to be brief, gentlemen. <laughs> it's never going to be brief on this topic, I think. I know. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's an important point. It's, yeah, it's, I know we got a lot to talk about, but we've got to try to be succinct, especially when you have a lot of panelists on, when you have too long of a narration, it kills it. Yeah, that's that's true, that's true. So, yeah. Steven, let me let me begin by saying when I graduated in in May, I I went to Acadia. I did international peace, security, and conflict resolution, and there's a course that we did in international relation and diplomacy. When your bilateral partner issue a diplomatic note, it is meant to be a uh, classic. It's a classic document that doesn't come out to the public. Um, the moment it reaches out to the public, it becomes uh, declassified. So we will not expect our American counterparts to come and say, hey, yeah, that's true, we issue a diplomatic note, all right? I trust the credibility of the data as ever. Oh, yeah. I trust the research, the investigation done. In fact, the name in that particular report is uh, the Deputy Minister for Administration at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So, you know, there's, there's traces, the people that we can point to. Uh, the second point I'd like to make is that there's interest being generated here. Um, on one hand, we have to go back to some of the conversations that we have been having on questioning and deepening in the, the body of individuals that we have heading the National Elections Commission. I maintain that if we in the opposition think that it is too late to call on for the replacement and removal of the Greta Brown Lassana, I don't think it's too late. She is swimming into controversy. She has been dragged to the court on 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 counts of corruption and 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 um how you call it conflict of interest, and no, that's no. hanging over her because the executive dropped the case without prejudice. That means that at any point in time. The executive can decide to reawaken and, 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 and resurface the case. Now you have this, this whole issue of the awarding of the contracts to the Chinese company, right? If you go on the PPCC website, there's only two contracts that the PPCC have issued in 2022, giving no objection. And the two contracts amount, uh, the value of one of them is less than even um, half a million. 12 million is not just a small amount to have the PPCC issuing no objection. That should be a competitive building process. It should be open and transparent. And this is what our American counterparts are concerned about. The last one I'd like to make, Stephen, my fundamental question has to do with why China, and I know my friend Mo Ali will come after me to, you know, to disagree, but why China, why this point? If you compare America's investment since the end of the civil war, what they have invested in Liberia, as opposed to the Chinese, you know, modus operandi investment based on resource swap and all that stuff, it's fine. The margin is why. So why China? China is a communist nation, for sure. China has no history of diplomatic tendency. If you read the report given by Dede Ozeva, uh, the, EK, the EKEMP, said they have history of dealing with uh, election way in Namibia. Namibia is a kind of like socialist oriented country. Ghana, Nigeria, Africans have all been before us in this whole biometric voting process. They did not use a Chinese company. So any one government or any administration, especially for a diplomatic, uh, diplomatic uh, democratic country like Liberia, would understand that the historical role of America is paramount in this election because they have invested, in, invested a lot in this country. And owing to the geopolitics of everything, you cannot take a Chinese company, almost like so, surrounding your sovereignty in a major electionary process. You gave, me, you gave me classified data or, of, of your citizenry. Or, or a communist enterprise. Why are we not using the HID uh, 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 
Opa. It's people like I mean American <laughs> company that have done a lot of electionary processes around the world. Why are we not doing that? I think if any attempt for the National Elections Commission to use uh this Chinese enterprise, this Chinese company, will be a slap in the face of uh of our bilateral partner, Thank which you. is the United States, and it also undermine and show a level of ungratefulness in terms of our biological friendship that we share and owing to America of great investment in like Europe. Thank you. Thank you. Take, that, take that ungratefulness out. Take that ungratefulness <laughs> out, okay? When you've been exploited for over a hundred years, come on, Larima. I know you're an American sympathizer, etc. but <laughs> what's this nonsense at this <laughs> stage of our life? The, the people who are coming to uh, assist Anthony, us, we yeah, should yeah, take Anthony. it. No, uh, nobody is ungrateful. America owes us. Case closed. Thank you, Adam Biada. The radicalism, the radicalism is evolving all day. Yeah, I'm sure I should come in by this time. Yeah. Yeah. Ali, 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 Ali. La, Lama has been dealt with. <laughs> no, you know, we can, we can, we can count on him to me. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Go more. I am sure we should, we should Go find a day to, to talk about this. Now I will give it. Now I think I will give it to him. You know, my, my frustration starts with the fact that Liberia has totally lost her independence. Complete. That we depend on the Americans to even tell us that our streets are dirty before we know that our streets are dirty. Mm -hmm. That we will have to sit for the Americans to say that uh, 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 NEC has hired a Chinese company. Now, I don't care about where the company comes from. The point that Daniel made is that it should go through the proper process, the PPCC processes. We need to focus on the processes. How credible is the company? Companies can come from the United States and they can be very incredible. They can get engaged into corruption. We've exactly. seen some of them in this very country. So it should not be our focus should not be, you know, the Americans have helped us too much. And so everything must be said by Americans before we take it. We all understand that NEC has issues. We have been raising issues with NEC. We have raised issues with the credibility of the commissioners there. We have said over and over that NEC does not have, the current composition of NEC does not have the credibility to conduct free, fair, and transparent elections. We don't need to wait for the Americans to tell us that, that there are issues with data here. Well, we have been singing this song since 2017. We've always said that there are issues with the data center at the Elections Commission, that people like Floyd who still sit there as commissioner, they are corrupt in their mind, they are corrupt in their attitude, and they are corrupt in everything. They should not be there. But nobody listens to us. We only wait when the American ambassador says, oh, NEC has issues, then we run with it. Why don't we run with it on our own every day? Why do we why are we just surrendering everything that the American the American ambassador had to come out on, on JJ Rao's birthday to say if JJ Rao was alive, Moravia is dead, then we start running with it. One single letter they write, and then when we talk, we say, you know, we should be watchful because everything they do now, they will sanction. Why if America is not there to sanction people? Aren't we capable enough as oppositions to take these matters and run with them and bring the government feet to fire? Suppose America is not doing them for us. We sit and wait for them the odd of the time. It shows laziness on our part. Mm -hmm. It shows laziness on the part of the opposition here. It shows that if somebody does not talk, speak for us, even if we won the election, they will just clear it from under our nose and the American will not come to fight for you. you money. We have to stand up and be men and women and, and, and do away with this dependency syndrome on America all of the time. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Mo Ali. Thank you. I got a yeah. question for Mo, but everybody go through. So interesting. I what a good discussion. 
And before I make the comment that I'm supposed to make, I don't know why Mo is wondering as to why it must be America doing something before we act. Mo, you can issue all the press statement and you can go beyond it. The last time I recall JMB addressed the press, he talked about how NEC is not credible to conduct the election. What action have you taken since that speech? But when America said they may on sanction and you don't fire the man, you're not coming to my country. The hell can break loose behind the scene. So when I told you that those who are resigning now, their actions are involuntary, what I meant actually, which you all know, is that they didn't do it because they wanted to do it. Somebody was knocking, the, including the president here from behind and say, oh man, we told you these people are criminal, we sanctioned them, you play fun. It's, you said they suspended the right government card, they get government security behind them. Is that what you do? You just issue, you just issue press releases. That's all you do as opposition people. Nothing goes beyond press release. You you say you want the head of Brian or go to the election commission. What have you done about it? Okay. Right now, if, if America were to say something about those people and they say they can't work with them, hmm. that will break loose. So we it, took America, it took America to say Charles Taylor must leave and he must leave now. And Charles Taylor left. Then he left. Yeah, I agree with you. And that's why I said we are too much dependent on them. Why don't we be independent for once? Because you don't have balls. You don't have balls. And we'll make you have balls. We'll make you have so let, 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 let me get to the issue. Look, we should move to the state of being dependent and I don't want your reply. I don't want your reply. Stevie? No, but I'm giving you my reply. Eh, 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 eh. It wouldn't matter who gets a biometric contract once the process is free, transparent, competitive, and the one who wins the bid to do the job is chosen in a transparent manner. When I read the front page Africa story, I got concerned when they started talking about neck in shade of D. Because they see neck. What they were procuring when they when the next chairman gave it to her brother? What was that? What were they procuring? Steve? Yeah. What did they procure at that time when the next chairman gave it to her? They said she gave it to her family. It was the it was I think that the, it was the internet internet um yes the internet service. Mm -hmm. No, it was something I don't think that's it. Whoa, you were you were second job of a party. Yeah, I, I think what was it? What was the question? The one, the one, the one that the one that the next chairman went to court for. Why were they procuring? Oh, she gave a contract to the thermometer, thermometer, thermometer for for the COVID. I think Toman Toman Enterprise, right? The thermometer for COVID. So, so the point I'm trying to make that history is there. That process was carried around by fraud. The beneficiary was her brother. You went to code that that is still pending. That was a little thing, but you not use biometrics before in your electioneering process. It's the first time you are about to use it. We cannot afford anything stupid with the process. Even in America, that, 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 that uses biometric had issues the last time. That, that was the issue of biometric. Nigeria using for the first time they had issue in Ghana. Exactly. That's the thing. That's the thing. Issue. We shouldn't be concerned. So you cannot just give biometric contract or anyhow. We got to see the, I mean, the person had to be competitive. We got to know the history of the one you're giving it to. And Pia, let me just give you additional information. Who's who's spending the money at NEC? Is the USAID money? Okay. That, that, that one is a good thing. And, and why I don't care much about who takes the contract, eh? but, but, there's a key pillow here, Stevie, and I know what all of you are paying attention. What is that pillow? Democracy. If you are doing those kind of democratic element business with non-democratic nation, that alone is a problem. It raises concern. That alone is a problem. Whether people want to hear it or not, that's a problem. If, I to, if, if I'm building a democratic system and I want to do something that will enhance democracy, and the people are taking it from they are, they are not democratic, they don't even hold democratic election to, to derive their leaders, then there's a problem. But since we want to be transparent business-wise, and not by political ideology. Do it transparently. And it should be established that whoever you give it to, 
has the credibility. Because we would have, like, 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 like uh, Sano said, election is a time born for conflict. We have a history. We fought a war. The beginning of that war was because of rigged election. If we don't pay attention, then we are having a problem. I'm surprised that, like Mo said, that international people and front page Africa raising issue that there's a shaded D. No opposition political party has said anything about it. So if, if front page Africa didn't report it, zero. If the U.S. ambassador doesn't say something about it, zero. If in fact, it's the U.S. ambassador that is still telling us in the letter refuting the information that they believe our processes, procurement, other things should be transparent and credible. China has not said it. No Korean yeah. say it. South Korea ain't say it. They were not. Our political actors themselves have not said it. Everybody, everybody's sleeping. If we don't see the need of wake up, Stevie, you must have will turn a cloud real there until we get host. Until our esophagal bus. <laughs> and you don't get joy. We are the part as incompetent as it is. They are still the way they have destroyed the country. You are still making you know, just walk free somewhere because you're treating everything carelessly. Carelessly. You have myself no idea to rank into the election commission. CDC, CDC nomination to Ellen Johnson Selling. Floor, who is the dollar commission, has been in our play working for CDC through our manipulating data. All the other people who were who had been the Basi Bamba and Asama Kwa for the Jay. Yeah, Asama Kwa, Basi Bamba, Natana Magege, who now talking about beating GB or something. Somebody went nominated another person for this place. Tipla Reed ran on CDC ticket for in Riverside. So that whole commission is a partisan structure. You got to be on their back and demand transparency from them. Once they see you sleeping, they say those fools who mean business. That's the draw of that party. So you are sitting there. No, I think, no, I mean, I think, I think um, Chair, let me say all the things I want to say. No, yeah, I, I, I hundred, I percent agree with you on the last point. I hundred percent agree with you on the last point. I do not think, and that's why I was saying, maybe it, it has been understood in a different context. The opposition, we should not be sitting for somebody to tell us that something is wrong. And that's why I, I am saying, if the procurement processes are wrong, then we should talk about it. The political parties should demand that this process be transparent. And even if they cannot be a part of it, but they must witness the process so that we all can be happy with these pro procurement processes. Because if the wrong instrument is procured, it can be used to manipulate the data. And that we will just sit down and cry again and cry. And just like Pia said, we will just issue press releases because we do not have the courage as opposition political parties to get into the street and demand what is right. Political more, leaders more, do not more, have the courage to more, say more, more, more you are right, but the thing is, they're not paying attention. If you pay attention, you know what is happening. I doubt whether they are paying attention. They're more yeah. concerned about somebody coming to read two hour press statement declaring that they're joining their party, or ANC attacking UP, you people attack. That's why they're more concerned about. And that's not what's going to take any of you to the executive exactly. The process has been transparent. That's true. They've been incredible, holding the people who are responsible, including the government, feet to the fire. That's what will take you in this process. I'll be free, fair, transparent, that the Liberian people will, will matter. All the things that are priority for you, sorry, garbage, trash. Exactly. Let me just, let me just start, all right? Start, all right? I think what we have is a scenario of we have a diplomatic uh, opposition and a ruthless government in power. When, when, when the United Party was in leadership for the 12 years, it was a ruthless opposition versus a diplomatic um, system of governance, right? Government. So I think we have to change the strategy here. The only time the government was afraid of the opposition was in, was June 7. And you saw how they panic. They caught it the was June 7. Since June 7, everything about the opposition has reverted to press conference. And after the press conference, everybody fold their hands. We have to go back to a radical no roadmap. action after press conference. No action. Radical roadmap. That's the only way the government will fear what the opposition is saying. So America is doing a great favor, great help by being a third party opposition in the process. 
of making some of these uh, um, pronouncements. Okay, okay, okay. Um, 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 Daniel, please announce the number on the screen for people to call. Uh, 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 Steven. Yes, sir. Before we take general call, I want us to talk to George Wally. He reached out to me and he said he's an expert in biometric system. Okay, good. So he had, he had a professional input to make. So I told you to hold on, ready to make the call. He, 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 on the phone now? No, I, I just wanted to get your permission first. Yeah, call him. Call him. And, and let me and call we, him on the screen. Yeah, we can talk to him before talking to any other person. Uh, so let me. Okay, so George is being called. I'm calling him now. And then we'll talk to him before you go to the rest of the call. Hello? All right, so George Wallace. Yes, sir. Uh, based on your interest, uh, with regards to the biometric system, the team talked to listen to you. Thank you, sir. And, so, uh, all ears, the panel, the panelists are listening, the librarian people are listening. Go ahead, sir. Thank you, sir. And uh, by greetings to all the panelists, since me other our email. Um, I will not speak about the politics of the PPPC uh, regulations on the biometric system uh, that is being intended for the elections. I'll be more specific when it comes to the integrity the data, of the data, the process, the storage, the technology, and the deployment of a of, of biometric system in Liberia. And um, I have uh, authority to speak on this because uh, we're the first that rolled out the biometric passport in Liberia, though there's still issues that need to be dealt with because of the policies around it. Now, and uh, after my uh, the statement, I'm, I'm open to questions from the panelists as well. So we'll first of all look at, okay, what is a biometric system? And I'm trying to break it down so that every library can understand uh, the memory system is the person of measuring the uniqueness, unique physical behavioral characteristics of humans. So it's either the iris, which is the eyes, the facial or fingerprint. So um, the, the in Liberia now, uh, we do have, uh, there's this process that's going on currently, there's a national identification system. In my opinion, uh, if Liberia wants to have uh, a biometric election uh, that needs to be uh, um, a sync between that and the passport application system that we have at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So, um, and, uh, and, uh, and further to speak to that, I would say it's impossible to roll out such system right now for election purposes, especially when the technology is not there. Uh, when we talk about technology, you look at connectivity between the various locations, you look at the prisons, how do you collect data? What is the integrity of the data? How do you store the data temporarily in case internet goes off? Uh, what's the process? I mean, the integrity of the human resources that you deploy, because you can deploy technology at the same time, the people you deploy there might decide to cheat the system. And it's happening with the password system currently in Liberia because of the policies that was put in place. The password system library has options that you can actually, as the administrator, suspend the fingerprint process and you can easily give an excuse saying that the person don't have fingers knowing very well that we fought war in Liberia. So in a lot of people in Liberia, uh, I, I don't want to accuse them or buy no things that have been happening. Uh, they've been using that process to issue multiple passports to individuals. Now, the essence of biometric system is to be able to do cross match verification. That is the fingerprint. We collect one fingerprint from an individual, it stores into the database, and you should be able to cross match it with other people's uh, fingerprints to ensure that that same person does not come back to, 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 to obtain a password. So uh, I'll stop there right now if you have any questions as well. All right, Stevie, Stevie uh, what I think is that we were discussing the biometry and we know how important it is for the electoral process. I think we take what Josh has said for now, and just hold on to it because we got just 10 more minutes and we need to hear from our callers. We can plan and maybe this week or next week. Yeah, ask Josh when he's available. We can have a special segment on the biometrics where Josh, I mean, yeah, Wallace can be a guest. He can propound more and then he can take questions from the panel. Yeah. So ask him yeah. when he's available. So when's your next availability so you can be a guest on the show rather than this people? Wednesday. Friday? Yes, sir. 
All right, it says Friday. So Friday, we you make an adjustment. Let it be part of our our itinerary. Okay. Thank you, George. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> So um uh, um um Daniel, uh, please announce the number, Ali. Okay, so we announce the number for the folks on the radio for the, the women. The women can call 077-001-3667. I read that again. 077-001-3667. That's for the female. For the men, you can call 0775-0777-542-845. 0777-542-845. And of course, the folks from the international line, the number is there here on the screen. Steven, it's up to you. Yeah, so um, the lines are open. Um, if you're overseas and you want to call yourself, plus 40, plus 1, Eight two six six. That is for those in the diaspora. Uh, if you're a female in Liberia, the number is zero seven seven zero zero one three six six seven. For our mail is zero seven 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 five four two eight four five. So the phone lines are open. Um, you can call and make your contribution. Do we have any call? Not yet. So um uh, 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 um um let 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 talk more on this um uh, and I think it's important for us to bring Josh here um on Friday for us to talk more about the, the biometric and I think while, when we bring him also Pia we need to get somebody who who is an election who works with the who has worked with the National Elections Commission also so that they can come and throw light on next capacity in terms of what they have there. What are they able to deal with? with, with, because, with because, because these are people like, like, I could not even manage a manual voter registration. Exactly. They couldn't even manage a manual system. We can, we can also get um, Josiah. I try to reach out to him. Yeah, try to reach out to Josiah for Friday. Daniel, Daniel Sano. Daniel. I have a caller here. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Hello, caller. Hello? Hello? Yes, go ahead. Hello? Hello? Yeah, I have a call on the line. Hello? Yeah, I have a call on the line. Go ahead, call on. Hello? Go ahead. Hello? Yeah, this is this is Dickie Luna calling from Corwell. Oh, let me say thank you to the panelists. Let me say thank you to the panelists. Uh, my point here is that what we're, we're talking about, the the biomedic, the biomedic uh, 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 thing here. For me, for me, I know that the, the, the ruling party is planning to rig this election. And I know say that the, the election can be rigged before the election itself. They did, they did it in Lufa, they did it in District 15 here. And we know the crisis of this government. So the opposition, as you said, we couldn't only wait for America to come out with a proposal before we can come in. So this, this, this is the first time that we need radical on this government that will now find means to keep. But if we get said on that one election commission, you see what it's going to the Liberty Party. They start to tell us something in this country that our peace process with with like fragile already that will go into into the butchers again for our best in the opposition. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Let's take order call up. I have a caller here. Thank you. Hello. 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 Yeah, go ahead. Your name? Okay, Hold on a minute. Name. Yes, what are you coming from? DC 11. Go ahead, Lydia. Um, I'm concerned to do with that biometric system. This is not the right time for that. In this crucial time, I think we should go, we should do the old system. We should go by the counting. Let everybody, let, let, let everybody be there and watch and see the, the, the numbers and be there. They have to the pull watchers and stuff like that. This is not the right time for that kind of thing. So I don't think it's the right time. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Lenny. Thank you. Let me, let me, let me get a call yeah, from the uh, 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 yeah, no, me. Yeah, let me get it. All right, go ahead. The question is, bro, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Chief. 
Hello, call her your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, good evening. I'm Ed D. Elliott, calling from my union drive for incident, district number eight. Yeah, go ahead, well, please. I want, I want to be grateful tonight for the show and I thank ever so much. I want to say thank you to Senator DeLong today. I monitor the whole section today and I like the clarity. They want to take people who still live in cold month would not understand the functions and understand what is unfolding and the body politics that is playing off Capitol Hill. But however, nevertheless, I want to say to you, like how to limit PR put it. The Unity Party is taking a bigger lead in the opposition community. And it is it is about time that it be more robust than ever before. These guys, we're not gonna take a joke with them. I am a member of the Liberty Party, no matter what happened, you want, notorious or our party on no hostage. We stay in the struggle for the independent of our party. But however, we remain committed to the future of Charles Walker Pumpkin. But I expect the Liberty, I mean the Unity Party that we all building that leading the opposition community to be more robust, speaking on trending national issues, raising serious concerns about these elections matter. Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. But Thank, you. For Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I have a call here. Hello. Yeah, just hello, hold on. Yeah, Daniel, go through. Hello from Minnesota. Go ahead. Yeah. Just hold on. Hello. Yeah. Oh, my name is Michael Harris. You got call from Minnesota. Yeah, you got one minute, bro. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my concern is that regular to Senator Dino, I don't know why he's still on the show. He left. He's listening. He's listening. He's listening. The clarity he made concerning his pension package. But uh, I want to ask him, what is he considering? He could be, because I listen to other networks such as Spoon Talk, led by Stunto Wellspoon. He read a list of those who signed a resolution according to Senator Dino, somebody criminally changed a document, all those kind of things. Now he read a list of the, the, the senator that signed. When they come, when they came to Senator Dino, he said, when soon as they read a list, you know, I'm going to yeah, I won't be president of five President Joe Parker. Senator Dino said, I wrote a criminal. My question was Senator Dino is that, are you considering demand and apology for these people raising apology because it has to be a repetition? And if if the show to run an apology to you, are you considering is there any reason, any any, any room for order the law that you can take legal action against these people? Because these are things that need to be brought in our society. And federal institutions are, are still supposed to be Thank you don't just take that you want all gas that you should be should bring the world. Mr. Widowspoon and his legs will we, we get their pay. Thank you. you. Let me take this call off from here. Yeah. Call off where here. Good evening. Oh, as you move. Yeah. Your name and where are you calling from? Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Usman M. I am the chairperson of the United Party International Response Bureau and resident of district number two. Go ahead. Uh, I think thank you guys for the show, you know, this evening. I think. We listen to the advice of, you know, uh, uh, Stephen, uh, Lou Mo, and other guys, you know, who used to tell your advice on square and but we found out that actually square and have become a media station that promoting the government. I think this is good for us. I think we are happy. Uh, concerning the National Industrial Commission, that one minute, girl. it is that we, the opposition, to talk for ourselves. We don't have to wait for America to be coming on our defense all the times. And this goes to what the unity party that I belong to, especially our senator. Because whether you like it or not, they saw the on the ground, the race is between Boakai and George Wheeler. That is a clear call. So it is never with the unity party, along with our collaborating political party, those are members of the unity party, you know, for to wake up. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Power. Thank you. Thank you. Daniel, Hello, caller. Where are you calling from? Your no, I don't have any. Yeah, go ahead. Your name and where are you calling from? Michael, good morning. Michael, good morning. Thank you, Michael. Go ahead. Yeah, the question I'm listening to Paul is on a shoe, mm. but it relates to neck wearing a contract to OB company. Normally, we know how the CDC administration operates. 
I mean, we did recent day when the U.S. sent a sanction on the TV boys that are calling me because of the <laughs> still when I bring people. <laughs> Already. I have seen them go over the hill. They can't say they're stealing, so they are boys. <laughs> he said they're stealing, so they are boys. <laughs> yes. Yeah. They're stealing, so they are boys. Thank you, my man. Let's talk. Bye. We need all our colors on the line. I have a color, Mo. Yeah, let you have for the female. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to end the race for Grandma. Yes, hold on. Hello, hello. Please call your name. Please call your name. Go ahead. Yeah, my question has to do with the tension business. Uh, it was a community bill that the senator, both senators from the Liberty Party signed, and the governor has been misleading the entire country. Can there be any action taken against those people that say our, our, our senator signed the bill? Okay, okay. Yeah. 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 Call yeah. up from America, go ahead. I think it's good. Stevie, you want to clarify? Call up from America, go ahead. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Okay. I will call up. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. They are listening to my you. Is, yeah, my name is Lena. I'm calling from Minnesota. Okay, I wanted to ask about the divorce citizenship and also the election. Um, um, the election process, whether we in the diaspora we have a say in the election, like to say by voting. So, is there anything being done for us to have a say? Do you guys have any idea what are we going to do for us? What are they going to do? Sylvia, you want to answer her? Yes, uh, sweetheart, you gotta buy Thank you. Let me take this call. You gotta buy a ticket and come to Monrovia anytime between December and March to register. Find your region because a specific regions will be registering. Then you go back to Minnesota, and then when it time to uh, cast your vote, you come back to Monrovia and cast your vote. Oh, she says um, your registration will be from March for December to from March. From December 15 to so March 27. You go to Nigeria, you register, you come back. Then the election time, you go by, you vote. You got a freedom. You got a right. Yeah. But I mean, all right, thank you. Let me take this call off. Even, even with passports, even with passports, they can't do your well, passport in Washington, DC. They got to come place. to send it to Monrovia. So that's it. You're, we got no allowance for people in the diaspora. Yeah, we got the machinery, where? we got the money, we got the structure. Because if you do it for America, the out the Liberians in Europe wanted to. So your buy a ticket, come home. Yeah, go you ahead. You're staying in the line. Go ahead, okay. go ahead. You okay. you calling from where? I'm Eugene Utah from the Kiana Grand Baza County. Baza Bogan, we are calling this way. Go ahead. Yeah, we can send it to you. I'm calling this with Dana Sando. Uh huh. The issue of the PPCC law following the procedure, that's good. They are, we have a lot of credible institutions, like the FOR, the LACC, the PPCC, for what we talk about. Now, these are all good institutions and unique for our society. But uh, it will say we follow the procedure to a work contract as we got to the biometric system of our election. Then we may be, we may be wasting our time. Why? Place, Why? In the, good. In the first place, let us look at the, the history. Can I have any record of putting into Liberia election or anything? And I look at America, I will say yes. People are calling America need because America have been helping us. In fact, during the 2005 and 2006 election, there were international observers, including Americans. What besides? I mean, sorry, besides our people, <clears throat> when it comes to public spending. You got that one minute, oh. uh, I almost reminded you more than right? one minute. Thank you, thank you. Of recent, the American 
quickly, please. Because they are monitoring our activities. All right. So general, general, no record any of helping us in terms of the legendary. Thank theory, you. In terms of any bringing correct people. More, 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 Ali, more, Ali, don't let her answer you gave him so that I'm more rushing you to leave the phone. Yes, yeah, so sir. I'm calling you quick with next call on your name and where are you calling from? <laughs> Lama, I have never moved at home. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Yeah. America, be talking tough. Thank you, Chief. More let me put the call up quick. Thank you. Thank call you. Call up with you, go ahead. My name is Nisu. Formerly, I'm calling from Seward to Maryland. I just want to say, I work every election in Maryland. I work with the election commission. I work with the election commission. Some of us are willing to come to Nigeria today to be a full worker because it's very yeah. important because you can have yeah, everything. Yeah, the observer yeah. those that are working as observer and to the floor to the floor to be a full worker is very important in this election because uh, we don't have a Chinese to anything for the election in the floor Mo, Mo Ali will not let us come you making your but go ahead. Can I put in through? Hello, caller. Yeah, your name. Oh, sorry, somebody still on the line. Hello. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, my name is Thomas Quinn. I'm calling from this point to community to be precise. Go ahead, do community. Yeah. Let me remind you that the election of God directly to power. Dao Dao was voted based on anger. That temper brought Dao Dao. It was not opposition that voted Dao Dao. It was the same situation that voted Dao Dao. Liberians are angry. So no that about making the people to the point that they will know what they're doing. And any attempt for anybody to temper when they come in election, any rebellion that can up, just like all his interactions, they will get themselves prepared to be held liable for any attempt of any insurrection that will occur. Thank you, Chief. Oh, well, I'll speak. Oh, well, I'll speak. You're going to be on the street. That baby speech you're making all day. I've heard that with any attempt. Call up from the last one. Yeah, well, what's your three more calls? Thank you for getting me. Hello, Peter. Let me tell you something. Yeah, go ahead, sir. You guys are listening. Oh, Lord. Yeah. yeah, but who are you, sir? Who are you, sir? My name is Victor. I'm calling from Houston. Okay. No, you're on my load. The only the only thing I can defeat is seditious. We gotta be able to what is a seditious? And the only language you can understand is violence. Let me tell you something. It will go outside the project that the one of us will be dead. Yeah, that's the only one who will be seditious. Tell the chef and numbers. They put no idea about the animal. They have to come in. So they will force their way back to the presidency. So the best way for us now is to behave worse than them. Let me tell you, that's the only one who can save a girl for the criminals. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. I have a call on the line here. Yeah. Hello, caller. Your name and where are you calling from? Good evening. My name is Harold. I do call from Grand Bassel Town this evening. Grand Bassel, okay. Where are they call? Go ahead. Yeah, my attention has been drawn to the statement that was made by the senator. He said that. He, he didn't just sign, but some more people are like using you see his signature to do a lot of fake things. I want, I want him to, to clarify the statement that the, 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 the bill that was passed just recently, the one that went to the lower house. So I want him to justify how, how is, is it like? All right, we'll ask him. He will come on to clarify. He was here earlier. earlier. You just joined the program, so you've missed a lot. Take the next call. Thank you. I'm taking the last caller from my end. Hello, you yeah. are the last. Go ahead, your name and where are you calling from? The last for you, but not last for me. Oh, I said from my end. Yeah? Uh, well, my name is Frank Bigger Jr. And I joined from Vanavia Garris Market. Go ahead. Uh, well, you know, let me first of all appreciate every one of you on, on the show. You see, uh, 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 Mo and uh, Sano, uh, the best thing to do or to this government is to be very much radical. This is not just about the political leaders, but also we, the partisans of the, uh, 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 the, the opposition political parties. You see, the thing that what the people are doing, they are casting their character people over there, like uh, 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 Joseph who take our money, lavishly all around, then is going to, to tarnish our tenants of repetition. And not just so, you got Sajusa, I mean, Sajusa who, who bring in people retire to retire kind, in the United of I mean, Yes, I have minister, therefore they intend to probably one minister now, the man I counsel that I counsel minister. I mean, I don't really know what what the people are coming from. Yeah, they give me happy when they say they are wearing control to 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 me. I mean, I mean, I mean, we 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 really need to stand strong. All right, they put on rigging election and they they not start rigging the world. If you can remember, bring on this thing that this is that when you have become president, we are in the country and we have to stand strong. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have a call on you, Mo. Okay. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, finish with my end. Yeah, uh, what? Uh, Emily, how are you doing? Go ahead. Your name, where you call from? This is something matter calling from the Canada Grand Basel County. You know, yeah, I'm Basel people. Um, uh, let me make a clarity on class real earlier tonight. Is the program, is the program live on Radio Dubai? Live on Radio Dubai, loud and clear to them when they ever be Wonderful. Uh, if you come to Grand Basel County right now, because when class we know that on, we 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 are class we know that fair. So we can be going, we can be monitoring from community to community. So I was like in three community and everybody close by the radio. So class we class we know that making headway in the canal. I have a clarity tonight. The clarity here is that we we are on the road as a people to make our new government to redeem this country uh, we don't want people we don't want people like jefferson koji uh, uh example to be in our government and the grace of god yeah the new government in 2023 that will come and go at the same in that government to come and redeem the country you're bringing your blood your blood list too i don't care what a parliamentary or not <laughs> I mean, you got you got one minute. Yeah, God will confuse those people. I'm getting your information. Okay. The clarity I have to make is we don't want the uh, uh, Jefferson Kochi in our government. You know, saying that somebody would be like Jefferson Kochi, that we, uh, let me tell you the word to say, that we do respect the view of citizens, that we're not listening to citizens, and you know, whenever there is a good program on the radio and people try to make their call, and their call is the ego. We don't want those people. We want respectful people in this coming government. Class, we don't have making headway in Grandmaster County. Your, your keep glued to the phone. And I mean, it will help be possible for you to answer everybody, but at least, you know, for someone also call, even the same person, some people personal line, and there will be no response. Now, how you can start, how you can end. It is not deliberate. Generally, the line can be German now. Thank you, something. Yeah, so, thank you very much. We uh, 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 Mo Ali? Why I'm, why I'm taking this call, I want you guys who want to ground to try to get to Yeke. I'm getting some indication in my DM that Yeke was following the show, he was interested. So 
Since you want the grand calling directly to see whether he wants to come on while the caller from the US is talking. Uh, yeah, let him come on Wednesday. No, he just wanted to, I think they just wanted him to make input. And maybe when he comes on, you can tell him whether you want him to come on whenever. They just want him to call anybody else. Okay. So reach out to him to confirm that. Call from the US, go ahead. George, yeah, you got it. And uh, I, I just tried to make Darren Dillon to change the name that he had that we elected him on. We elected him as the light. I think Darren Dillon should change that name to. Hello? What is this thing? Oh, okay, okay. Oh, I wanted you to change the name to uh, to a very stronger name, like uh, where people can say when, when the language is firing, right? Um, I just wanted how we try to aim. Um, I, I, uh, because what Daryl Dillon is You want to change it from light to thunder? To yeah. Thunder. Okay. Yeah, yeah let, let, let Daryl Dillon be called a thunder for now. Okay. So, so every time a Daryl Dillon sound a catchy name, mm -hmm. it becomes a noise, and right away the guy in the house will go and redraw it, just because they want for Daryl Dillon to look uh, a little bit crazy, and so Liberian like, can respect him. So I think Daryl Dillon should change your land to the name to the thunder. Okay, sir. The light. Thank you. Uh, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Any that you may need to the hydro, it'll be easy. Oh, you got your guy? Ali, you got your guy? You got your guy now? Ali, Ali, can you hear us? I said, uh, uh, Steven. Sam so Wilson trying to take the other caller. They will take another caller who I've never called before, one of our egg colleagues. But let me let the caller talk. Caller from the US, go ahead. Yeah, thank you for so much for this uh, education for the good way you're doing for our country. Okay, sir. Because I'm just trying to share a little bit of fun. I have fun, but I really been serious to say this. Uh -huh. The name, the name. The name really what, 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 what's the name and where you calling from? I say I'm, I, my name is Sandra Brandel, and I call it from uh, Washington, Seattle. Okay, go ahead, sir. I think you just meet her over there with so called relatives. Yes. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yes, okay. Okay. Sometimes I know it's a piece of you, um, so PR, some of you over there, and think, hey, you got a lot of experience about our country and this, and it didn't matter whatsoever. I mean, if Joe, we are can sit. In the country where we all know, where were he? When he eat the West Point, he can play football and come from so far and eat it. Even if you live from where we keep your brother, some of us are not educated. But from what we see here and what we watch and how they put the idea, it teaches us a lot. This guy can sit over there, take over government, when Emma Sawyer and Tutu Hotting were running campaign or Jeff Sillyby or Dito Sawyer, he take a little boy. What do you call Jovan Jovan Kochi, who has never read a bedroom and lived inside with all confusion, taking and making seven million? One. It means like, that we are, I don't know where we're here in Liberia. We all who grow up in that town. I mean, we see. He said he learned the current event. Besides that. Are you guys following what the caller is saying? So if Dr. Sawyer, the caller is saying, if somebody like Dr. Sawyer's caliber, could be a candidate for city mayor of Monrovia. Yes. How did they come way down to a Jefferson Koji? Yeah. The librarians removed all the standards. They, look, they didn't lower the bar, they took it off. So that's why. And I think God has given the opportunity today. Thank you, sir. It's not that this lady that they called the chairman. Where the lady came from, when she was when we radio station, she became chairman today and one librarian like she went to a party farm. Oh, you mean the other brand Lassana? Yes. Okay. When they, when we were small, even a representative of the town, I remember, I don't want to show up, I had poultry farm, normal day. I was 20 somebody years of age when I had poultry farm. All right, sir. Thank you. Thank, thank you for your info. We're running out of time. It was it was okay. interesting. Thank you so much. Okay. So, guys, yeah, I think we... we, 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 we I have Angela Bush Cassell, one of our Adam followers who never called before. So let's just take her, then we'll close with a color. Yeah, since it's there, let's if take we can get Yeager, we'll close after the score. Yeah, no, Yeager will not come. On, we'll talk to him. Yeah, we're on air. You wanted to take part in the show? You wanted to call because I want the show. You are on. 
You on, you on air. I'm on I think you're I think you're calling for Sony Air. <laughs> 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 so uh, uh, guys, um uh, 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 let's let, let play this, let's play this quick tip. It's just 10 seconds, and then we'll go to closing. Um George will close, George will begin us. Um let's play this. Um it's a it's a it's a registered to phone message uh, from the class below there. It's a registered to phone message. Uh, Liberians, register to vote for the 2023 general and presidential elections. Registration starts December 15, 2022 and ends March 17, 2023. Your vote is your voice. Be heard. Vote as if your life depends on it because it does. You have the power. Use it. Register to vote. Play your part. A message. From the class reloaded with sponsorship from Africa Media. Liberians, register to vote for the 2023 general and presidential elections. Registration starts December 15, 2022, and ends March 17, 2023. Your vote is your voice. Be heard. Vote as if your life depends on it because it does. You have the power. Use it register to vote play your part a message from the class reloaded with sponsorship from africa media so there you have it um liberians if you if you want to vote if you want to register if you want to vote in next year's election you have to if you're in the diaspora you have to go home and register to vote um so that we can use our power the ad said your vote is your power use it um, and so, um, thank, let me say thank you all for joining us uh, this evening uh, for um, being part of the the class as as the uh, the, the teachers today. And uh, I'd like to say a big thank you to our students. So, in closing, uh, let's start with George um, George P. Lobo Jr. Uh, George, your your final word. I want to say thanks to my fellow panelists for your contribution to our country and its people. But for me, every time I close, I think it's an opportunity to speak to you Liberians at home and abroad. I want to be very, very clear here tonight. Please, I do not like ungrateful people. And the reason is simple. If President George, we are in the last five right, years plus guess. have done something to improve your life, please don't be ungrateful. You owe it up to the CDC to go and vote for him. But if you know very well, that since the inception of this government, nothing has worked for you. You have been struggling from begging, friends, relatives, home and abroad to survive. You owe it to yourself and your future to ensure that come 2023, George Weah and his gang of thieves never ever see close to the executive mansion. Liberians elections must not be seen as an opportunity to acquire new t-shirts and eat free food. Those decisions do have serious consequences. You made it, you made a decision in 2017. How is it? These are the questions we must ask ourselves. A country that was on the path of prosperity. Today, President We have put the country in reverse. He's sitting at his studio recording songs. The decision is yours. For those who he has made their life better, they owe it to him. For those media outlets that continue to propagate falsehood, lies, deception, and doing everything possible to ensure that the government remains in power, for them, we know who they are. But you as citizens, don't be fooled by Samuel Twain and his graft. Don't be carried away by these fake reports here and there. The Liberian economy is the only economy I've read of in the world that is doing very well and overperforming. But teachers are not paid on time. Government officials are talking about we are facing challenges. How can you be overperforming and break your uh, recording record breaking your revenue? Yet then you can't pay people. Look, folks, you can't lie to people. You can't intellectualize hunger. Go to the market. Ask what prices were when George Weah was inaugurated. See where they are today. You have an obligation to your children and your future. For me, I struggle every day, waking up knowing that the man who is the president of my country. Is a man who has no understanding of what it means to be president. Look, my brothers and sisters, the decision is yours. Vote wisely because 
if you think the country is high right now, the country mm -hmm. is just getting ready to start getting high. I see you. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you, George. Uh, Enter me after. Uh, thanks to everyone. Uh, it's been fun participating as always. Um, you came to me too quickly because I was trying to put my thoughts together. But anyway, um, what I want to say quickly, a lot of doubt is being raised about the biometric system. I'm one of those people who is advocating for biometric system. And my reason is simply with the biometric system, you will be able to catch the fraud. With the manual system, we were not able to catch the fraud in time. The, the double registration, the, 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 the bringing in of citizens from Guinea, bringing in citizens from Sierra Leone, we were not able to catch those early enough and it went into the, the, to, to the system. We were not able to follow up on the 100,000 extra ballots that Minister Amara Kone uh, 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 printed. Stevie, you don't smile. You're to be smiling. All of us know the story in town. The biometric system, when I go put my fingerprint there, is only one fingerprint. I can't go to LOFA and go register again. If I manage to get away from it, when it comes to the tabulation, they will see that this fingerprint shows up in Maserado, etc. Yes, we've never had it before, but we should think of what happened before. Before. And, 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 and uh, Larima, to our American friends that uh, we all look forward to and we should be eternally grateful. The, 2020, the 2017 election was unfair and unjust. Our leaders in West Africa tried to put a hold on the injustice that was supposed to happen. And what, what happened to, to our Americans? Did Madame Salif not call the American ambassador and tell her to release the, the results? And she did. And she did. Let's try the biometric system. Uh, uh, Lama, um, La Namibia is not an underdeveloped country. Similar, why are they? Na Namibia is not bad as we are. Oh, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> Namibia is not bad. You call the people socialist country. I you do something like that. They had a free and fair election. They are way ahead of us. We can ask for help from the so-called partners. If they mean well, they send observers, let them send experts to assist us. In 205, the United Nations brought in experts to manage our election. 205, let them do it again if they mean well. But the biometric system is the only guarantee that we will have. And Stephen, what I want to ask you all, especially uh, pertaining to that message that you all just put together, we need to start informing people that the timetable from December the 15th to March the 27th is not for everywhere. We need to explain to the people, if you are voting in Maserado County, you can only register from the 15th of December to the 6th of January. Yeah. From the other date, you will be registering in the regions, whether it's Kakata, Nimba, etc. So we cannot tell people, oh, you can register at any time. Somebody will come from America wanting to register in Maserado County in February. It's not possible. 
So we need to specifically get that word out. You will only be able to register in Maserado County between December 15th and the 6th of January. I keep quoting that because that's where I will be. That, that, that's a valid point because what Stephen just played, it, it gives the impression that just between December to March, anybody can register at any time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but 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 um these are these um as we as we go towards the registration will we'll, we'll update it because the, the initial information for NEC is tentative schedule. Because obviously NEC NEC will not it doesn't make any sense that during the heart of the Christmas season, that's when you will have the entire muscle rather registering during the entire festive season from the 15th to the 7th. That's when everybody focus on on the Christmas holiday, and then you know, and you're talking about monster rattle being the new. Stevie ain't got no money, they ain't got no money to buy a present, they ain't got no money to celebrate. Let her go stand in line and register. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, can't stop making excuses for them. So, you don't have to be other? I don't. I don't well, uh, I just want to <laughs> conclude by saying that. The conversation here has been very healthy for a foul march of our our dear country. We as political actors who've taken the initiative to uh, come on the platform routinely to highlight some of the issues that tend to undermine the stability of our country, our democracy, and we we believe that we say so will be the intention of getting the librarian people to be well enlightened so that they too can be able to make well informed inform this informed decisions uh, as we approach the elections i mean kind of thinking about it librarians themselves have become the victim of broken promises all of the promises that were made by the weird administration i uh, the last time i checked so we have delivered on zero of the promises so the time is now that librarian himself begin to take this conversation very seriously. We need to move this country forward. We cannot afford to give a government that is requesting for second term, but is behaving that it already has a third term. And that's how Mr. Weir is behaving. If at some point in time, yeah, officials okay. of government are not, being, are not being sanctioned, they are not being accused of corruption, they are not being prosecuted by the government by itself, all sorts of things are happening that require public, immediate public intervention to save this country. Immediate public intervention. I know, I, I know very well that prior to Mr. Weah becoming president, we could sit on the table and predict the path of this country to know what Liberia was hailing. But since he became president, the country is not just talking neutral. Initially, I had thought the country was talking neutral, but now the country is in reverse. We will have to begin as Liberians from every nook and cranny of this country, we have to begin to stand up for ourselves. It's not about who you're going to vote for to be president. It's ourselves. not about who's going to be lawmaker. It's not about who's going to be senator. It's about the future of your children. Think about the damages that have been done to the country in just on five years on a year. It's unprecedented, unimaginable. So I would just hope that Liberians can continue to develop interest in the issues that we are discussing here. Liberians can begin to rally around the rightful people to make this country smart again. Because we have now again become a complete embarrassment on the international scene. I'd like to say thank you to everybody for the opportunity. And uh, me, as usual, I'm always available to form a part of the panel. I'm always available I'm on this platform. Thank you. Lama. Yeah, so um, let me start on this note that, you know, things are not just difficult in Liberia, right? We in the U.S. and other parts of the world, the Liberian diaspora community, are also um, hurt by the difficulties and challenges in Liberia. Um, take, for example, as much as we experience the rocketing of crisis in Liberia, um, the price for plane ticket to go to Liberia has been increased. There are, in fact, limited flights going to the country. So we are all saddened that we are hurt by the situation in Liberia. Um, it's a very good thing that, you know, from the few quarters that we 
her raising the concern today and in subsequent in other shows that we've heard that the Liberian diaspora community, at least a few, um, have begun expressing interest in the process um, to participate. We want to encourage more Liberians in the diaspora, whether you're in Canada, um, you're in the US, you're in Europe, like make it your constitutional duty um, to form part of the process. Go to Liberia, register to vote, be a part of the change making, um, fundamental to creating a new direction for our country. I think it is, it is very important uh, when you do that because you'll be inscripting your name in history as being part of a process that deliver our country from the state of Babylon. Thank you, Ali. Thank you, Stephen. And I think my colleagues have touched on these issues uh, so well. Okay. Yeah. You move. I think he got a call. Ali, we can't hear you. Sorry. Mo Ali, you are muted. We can't hear anything you say. You muted. Just, yeah, probably. You stay Ali, muted. You stay you muted. Can you, you can't hear you. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. Yeah, yeah, let go. Wait, 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 wait. I think we have to have you. So, uh, few things quick. One, if you are in government now, and because the current president didn't care about what you do, even when his own integrity institution indicts you, he protects you. Well, you're involved in human rights violation, he protects you. Anything wrong that you are involved with, he protects you. I hope you learned your lesson from what is happening to the three guys who were sanctioned by the US. I hope you learn that there is an authority, there's a power beyond President Weir, capable of holding you accountable, even if President Weir closes his eyes on the things you are doing. Because if he fails to act and that authority acts, President Weir will follow. Sovereign nation, no sovereign nation, if you don't see that right here in the wall and know that if you do the wrong thing, and Mr. We have placed blind eye. That's our higher power that will hold you accountable. Second, let me remind the people at NEC about a famous quotation from Charles Taylor. And he said that to G. Henry Andrews and his election commission. He said to them, G. Henry Andrews, you and your commissioner, if you temper the elections to be held, he said, even the angels from heaven will not save you. I'm of the opinion that those quotations from Mr. Taylor still resonate today. And it does not have to come from a leader like a case one with Taylor. I think the Liberian people are sending that message loud and clear and resoundingly. It is in the interest of the current election commission to listen to what the people are saying. Because if you play with their elections, they're telling you, I'm not saying that. They are telling you there will be consequences. And the final thing before I close TV is this bow banner headline of front page Africa, tomorrow's edition, you know, it always sent out in advance, which is sorting things up by itself with the whole pension issue. That headline say members of the Senate take issue with the House of Representatives over rejection of a new election bill, says it has been politicized for their own benefit. And then the main banner, bull banner headline is, old pension law more evil 
that's a question mark. But then see the most interesting thing, which is the one that comes in a small writing. It says, as a result of the pension passed in 2003, former lawmakers are entitled to 4,000 United States dollars. I'm quoting from North Africa. As pension. And it is the law that the Senate seeks to amend. You know who's saying this? Jeremiah Kuhn, now opposition man. So they don't have to be hurting you here. Once he did the right thing for us, once we once we got information that he did the wrong thing, you saw how we dealt with him. We didn't say exactly. that he's a panelist on the show. You saw how in the matter went for his neck. And he had to come on the show to clear it. That's what it tells you the way we see the country. Without sick offense, without bullying anybody, you can be even our own. But he did a good job in clarifying. And when I see ruling party protégés like Jeremiah Kuhn and other people trying to clarify, then the media, the specific portion of the media that wants to see everything that contains their own name to be like a weapon that they can run with, destroy their own credibility, you just got to watch out because there's a saying that the truth crushed to the ground will rise again. Thank you. Wonderful Thank, you, to you. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you, Pierre. And let me give my closing argument. Elections have consequences. How you vote, who you vote, will determine at which pace, whether in the right direction or the wrong direction, or also the country remains stagnant. Our decision in 2017 to elect George Rea proved to be one of the worst decisions that Liberia made. The country is moving fast in reverse. Our institutions are all compromised, no integrity. Our public officials have become far more corrupt than we can ever imagine. But here's the good news. The good news is we have a chance to change all of this. Next year, 2023 offers us a chance for a new beginning, a time when we can all come together and elect a more responsive, more responsible, more experienced leadership. One that will provide for us the kinds of leadership we need in the forward march of our country. Our country is at a crossroads we have a critical decision to make. This is why we've stressed the need that Liberians in the diaspora must take advantage of the electoral registration window. Go back home, mobilize your community, talk to your neighbor, get them registered to vote. Because it is the only way we can shape our democracy. It is the only way we can change our government. If we don't register, if we don't vote, we can expect the same thing to continue. So important of voting is key. And we'll continue on this show to stress the need for voting and how each of us can go back home, register, so that we can play a major part in the elections next year. So on that note, we'd like to say thank you all for joining us. Um, we'd like to thank all of our panelists for coming. Um, Pia, Larman, George Lobo. No, um, we had no, no quotation today. It's coming. We had Daniel. <laughs> we had Daniel Sano, Mo Ali, Senator Dillon, and, and our own Ante Miata earlier. I would like to say thank you to our radio station, uh Bush Road Radio FM 98.1, Shakta FM 102.5 in Montorado, Radio Tupa 89.1 there in Grand Paso County, Voice of Lofa 99.3 there in Lofa, Radio Draw Africa 97.5 by Giddy, Voice of Compa. Uh, 106.5 there in Nimba and Buto Radio 102.3. Our quotation for the day, as Pierre asked, is by uh, George Washington. He says, uh, It is far better to be alone than to be in bad company. It is far better to be alone than to be in bad company. So, on that note, we come to the end of another edition of the class reloaded. To all of our folks in the comment section, we, we, we thank you for participating. For all of you watching us via the internet, we'd like to say thank you for joining us. We appreciate the time you take to be with us all through the conversation. We appreciate the feedback. We're looking forward to another fascinating edition of the program on uh, Wednesday when we all shall come back again. Hopefully, we'll get um, a new, you know, uh, some guests on to come and talk about 
trending national issue. On that note, Pia, thank you all for joining. Thank you, Larama. It's good to see you all again. Have a wonderful rest of the week until we meet. Uh, do have yourself a wonderful time. Bye bye. Liberians, register to vote for the 2023 general and presidential elections. Registration starts December 15, 2022, and ends March 17, 2023. Your vote is your voice. Be heard. Vote as if your life depends on it. In Liberia, November 1944, a public spirited person was born. Joseph Numa Wakai from Wasanga, Foya District, Lofa County. He is a role model. He's actually my inspiration. He's also a perfect example of humility. He's a very humble person. Through that papi, the help he start giving all from this swam here. I know that when he get there, he will help me. He will help the nation. In Liberia, November 1944, a public spirited person was born. Joseph Numa Wakai from Wasanga, Foya District, Lofa County. He is a role model. He's actually my inspiration. He's also a perfect example of humility. He's a very humble person. Through that papi, the help he start giving all from this swam here. I know that when he get there, he will. Liberians, Liberians, register to vote for the 2023 general and presidential elections. Registration starts December 15, 2022, and ends March 17, 2023. Your vote is your voice. Be heard. Vote as if your life depends on it, because it does. You have the power use it register to vote play your part a message from the class reloaded with sponsorship from africa media liberians register to vote for the 2023 general and presidential elections registration starts december 15 2022 and ends march 17 2023 your vote is your voice be heard Vote as if your life depends on it, because it does. You have the power. Use it. Register to vote. Play your part. A message from the class reloaded with sponsorship from Africa Media. It's all.